now here's my problem, uh, Governor. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, and I didn't uh, put him in the university, but on the other hand, under the Constitution, I have to carry out the orders of the carry that order out. I don't. I get. Uh, I don't want to do it in any way that causes uh, difficulty to you or to anyone else. But I've got to do it. Now I'd like to get your help in doing that. Yes. Well. Uh, have you talked with the uh, Attorney General this morning? Yeah, I talked to him, and uh, in fact, I just uh, met with him for about an hour, and we went over the situation. Uh, didn't he and Mr. Watkins have a talk this morning, and Tom Watkins, the lawyer from Jackson, or not? Uh, yes, he talked to Tom Watkins, he told me. Yes. Well, I don't know what happened. Well, I don't know what happened. Well, a chance to talk to him. Well, just wait just for one minute, because i got the Attorney General in the outer office, and I'll just speak yes, to him. All right. Hello, uh, Governor. Yes, I just right. talked to the Attorney General. Now, he said that he talked to Mr. Watkins, yes. and the problem is as to whether we can get uh, they, we can get some help in getting this fellow in uh, this week. Yes. Now, evidently, we could, uh, the Attorney General didn't feel that uh, he and Mr. Watkins had reached any final agreement on that. Well, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Watkins is going to fly up uh, early tomorrow morning. Right. And... Uh, could you gentlemen talk with him tomorrow? You... Yes, I'll have the Attorney General talk to him, and then uh, yes. after they've finished talking, I'll c talk to the Attorney General on, on I... the phone, and then if he feels it's useful for me to meet with I him, th I'll yes. do that. I thought they were making some progress. I didn't know. Well, but now, uh, say, you know, he and uh, if he and Mr. Watkins, they can meet tomorrow. Now, the difficulty is uh, we got two or three problems. In the first place, what can we do to, uh, if we, if, First place is the court's order to you, which I guess is you're given until Tuesday. What is your feeling on that? Well, I What's your position it over, Mr. President. Uh, uh, it's a serious matter, and I, I want to think it over for a few days until Tuesday, anyway. All right. Well, now let me let me uh, say this. Uh, you know what I'm up against, Mr. President. I took an oath in order to buy for the laws of this state right. and our Constitution here and the Constitution of the United States. I'm I'm on the spot here, you know. Well, now, you've got... Uh, I've taken an oath to do that, and you know what our laws are with reference to Yes, I understand that. But and, now we got uh, the... We have a statute that was enacted a couple of weeks ago stating positively that no one who had been convicted of a crime or uh, well, whether there's a criminal action pending against them would not be eligible for any of the institutions of higher learning. And uh, that's our law, and uh, it seemed like the Court of Appeals didn't pay any attention to that. Right. Well, of course, yeah. the, the problem is, Governor, that uh, I got my responsibility just like you have yours. Well, and my responsibility, true. of course, I, is to the... I, I realize that, and I appreciate that so much. Well, now, here's the thing, uh, Governor. I will... Uh, the Attorney General can talk to uh, Mr. Watkins tomorrow. What I would like to do is to try to work this out in an amicable way. We don't want a lot of people down there getting hurt, and we don't oh, want to have a... Right. You know, it's very Mr. easy President, to... Let me say this. They're calling, calling me and others from all over the state wanting to bring a thousand, wanting to bring five hundred, and two hundred, and all such as that, you know. I know. We well, don't that, want such as that. I know. Well, we don't want to have a, uh, we don't want to have a lot of people getting hurt or killed uh, down there. That's, that's correct. Uh, Mr. President, let me say this. Mr. Watkins is really an A1 lawyer, an honorable man, has the respect and the confidence of every lawyer in America who knows him. He's a law firm of Watkins and Eager. They have, they've had an A rating for many, many years, and, uh, uh, I believe this, that, that he can help solve this problem. Well, I will, uh, the Attorney General will see Mr. Watkins tomorrow, and then I, after the Attorney General and Mr. Watkins have finished, uh, then uh, I will be back in touch with you. All right, all right. I'll appreciate it so much now. Uh, there, Watkins will leave here in the morning, and I'll have him to get in touch with the Attorney General as to when he, he can see him tomorrow. Yeah, he'll see him, and uh, yes, we will, uh, then you and I will be back and talk again. All right, Thank all you. right. Okay. I appreciate your interest in our poultry program and all those things. Well, we're... we're Thank you so much. Okay, Governor. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, now. Right Thank on. you. All right. Hello? All right. Governor? President? Yes, sir. Oh, will you talk to Mr. Watkins? Uh, the Attorney General did. Uh... No, I have talked with him now in a couple of hours. Oh, well, now... I did know about two hours ago, Mr. President, he said he was going to talk uh, with, the, with the Attorney General and go see him tomorrow morning. Oh, well, in the meanwhile, then, the uh, Attorney General talked to Mr. Watkins to see whether there was some... Uh, uh, wait just a second. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Attorney General's right here. He'll
he'll tell you what he talked to Watkins, and Watkins is oh. going to talk to you. Wait a minute. All right, all right. You'll come right on the other phone, which is. Yes, you? all right, all right. <laughs> Hello? Yes, sir. General, how are you? Fine, Governor. How are you? Fine, fine. I uh, talked to Mr. Watkins, you know, earlier this morning. Oh, yeah. And uh, he really uh, did not have uh, much of a suggestion. He had uh, mentioned yesterday uh, uh, the possibility of our coming in tomorrow, uh, Monday, uh, with marshals, and uh, that, uh, that uh, as uh, under our understanding for Thursday, that uh, uh, the marshals would show up and that uh, you and the others would step aside, Mr. Meredith would come into the university. Well, he felt that when he mentioned, uh, he talked to me today, he said that he thought that that uh, would create some problems uh, which they could not overcome, and uh, he suggested at that time uh, some alternatives which were uh, not uh, very satisfactory. Well, and then he mentioned the fact that he might come up early tomorrow morning. Well, I called him back after I heard you know, the president's conversation with you and uh, said uh, that I thought I'd be glad to see him, but I thought that unless we had some real basis uh, for uh, some understanding and working out this very, very difficult problem, that they, really he was wasting his time. And that, uh, that uh, one of the basic requirements, in uh, my judgment, was the maintenance of uh, law and order, and, and that would require uh, some uh, very uh, strong and... Uh, uh, vocal action by uh, you yourself. Uh, well, yeah. I, I'm certainly going to try to maintain law and order, Mr. Yeah. Uh, General, just uh, the very best way that I can. But then they... I, I talked to the student body the other day and told them, really, uh, to have control of the physical and mental faculties, but it didn't do much good, seemed like. Well, uh, they cheered and carried on, but then they just started raving and carrying on, you know. Yeah. I think, uh, Governor, uh, uh, that if we, if, as a very minimum and as a start, uh, an order by you and the state that uh, that uh, people could not congregate uh, in Oxford now in groups of three or five, or larger than groups of three or five, uh, the second to get the school uh, authorities to issue instructions to the uh, students that, that if they congregate in groups that uh, they are liable for expulsion, if that was done this afternoon, I think that would be a, uh, a big step forward and that anybody carrying an arm or uh, arms or a club or anything like that uh, would be uh, liable to punishment. Well, Those it's kind it's of steps by you would indicate a uh, interest in uh, maintaining uh, law and order. Well, General, I certainly, I'll tell the Chancellor to announce to all the students to keep law and order and uh, uh, keep cool heads, but the trouble is not only the students, but it's so many thousands of outsiders will be there. Yeah, but I think if you said, Governor, uh, I'm not just yeah. to keep cool heads, but that they couldn't congregate. How many do you figure on sending down? Well, that's. Uh, I think that the president had some questions for you that he thought that uh, maybe if we could get some answers to them, that would, yeah. that would be what depend. Mr. President, General, why don't you? Uh, uh, I believe if you and Tom Watkins could get together, it'd help a lot. He's a very reasonable man, and, and he's he knows. He knows the situation down here as well as anybody living. If you all could get together tomorrow morning, I really think it would pay. I think it would help. Well, he doesn't have any suggestions. He just told me, Mr. Governor. Yes, well, so I, I, don't know what... I thought he did have. Well, he didn't. I mean, he said something about sending the Meredith, the sneaking him into Jackson and getting him registered while all of you were up at, yes. at Oxford, but that doesn't make much sense, does it? Well, I don't know why. why that, that's where they'd ordered him to go at first, you know. Yeah. You see, there's an order on the minutes. Mr. General, they have to register. Well, would you, you'd get, as I understand it, you'd get everybody up at Oxford and then we'd... And oh, then... well, that's exactly what Tom Watkins must have had in mind, you know. Yeah. Uh, let me talk with Tom and, and call you back in a little while. He's uh, not but a block for me. Uh, that's, uh, that's what he had in mind, I think. And, of course, uh, you know how it is in Jackson. Monday, there's no schools going on here, you know. Nobody would be anticipating anyone coming here, you know. Mm. Uh, Are you going up to Oxford on Monday? Is that your plan? Well, that's what I'd plan to do, yes, sir. Uh, Lieutenant Governor and I both are just, we'll have to be up there and try to keep order, you know. Mm. And uh, we'll be up there pretty early Monday morning. Will you? We'll be up there uh, unless you ask us not to. Yeah. Well, I see. We'll we'll be up there, and uh, that's where the, all the people will be. You know. I thought you and Watkins were going to talk about that kind of situation. Then what would be the best thing to do under those conditions? You know. Yeah. I think 
uh, Governor, that uh, the uh, President had uh, some uh, questions that he uh, wanted some answers to, uh, to uh, well, make his own determination. That's right. He wanted to know if I would uh, obey the orders of the court. I told him I'd have to just tell you that. Oh, that's a serious thing. I've taken an oath to buy the laws of this state and our state constitution, the constitution of the United States. <coughs> and, General, how can I violate my oath of office? How can I do that and live with the people of Mississippi? You know, they're expecting me to keep my word. That's what I'm up against, and I uh, don't know go, why, the court, why the court wouldn't understand that. Governor, this is the president speaking. Yes, sir. Uh, now, it's, I, I know that you're feeling about uh, the uh, law of Mississippi and the fact that uh, you don't want to carry out that court order. What we really want to have from you, though, is some understanding about whether the state police will maintain law and order. We understand your feeling about the court order and yes. your disagreement with it. But what we're concerned about is uh, how much violence is going to be and what kind of uh, action we'll have to take to prevent it. And I'd like to get assurances from you about that the state police down there will take positive action to maintain law and order. Then well, we'll know what we have to they'll do. Take, they'll take positive action, Mr. President, to maintain law and order as best we can. And now how we'll good have is... have 220 highway patrolmen. Right. And they'll absolutely be unarmed. Right. Well, the one I'm going to be on. Well, no, but the problem is, well, what can they do to maintain law and order and prevent the gathering of a mob and uh, action taken by the mob? What can they do? Can they stop that? Well, they'll do their best to. They'll do everything in their power to stop it. Now, what about the suggestions made by the Attorney General in regard to uh, not permitting people to congregate and start a mob? Well, we'll do our best to, to keep them from congregating, but that's hard to do, you know. Well, they just well, tell they them to move along. They're up on the sidewalks from uh, uh, different sides of the streets, what are you going to do about well, it? Well, now, as I understand it, uh, Governor, you would do everything you can to maintain uh, uh, law and order. I'll, I'll do everything in my power to maintain order. Right, now... And peace. Uh, we don't want any shooting down there. I understand. Now, Governor, what about the, can you maintain this order? Well, I don't know. I, that's what I'm worried about. Right. You see, I don't know whether I can or not. Right. I couldn't have the other afternoon. You couldn't have. There was such a mob there, it would have been impossible. There were men in their trucks and shotguns and all such as that. Not not a lot of them, but some we saw. And uh, uh, certain people were just, uh, they were just enraged. Well, now, will you talk just to... don't understand the situation down here. Well, the only thing is, I got my responsibility. I this is not my know. order. I just have to carry it out. So I want to get together and try to do it with you in a way which is the most satisfactory and causes the least chance of... Uh, damage to uh, people in uh, Mississippi. That's my interest. All right. Would you be willing to wait a while and let the people cool off on the whole thing? Until how long? Could you make a statement to the effect, Mr. President, uh, Mr. General, that under the circumstances existing in Mississippi, that uh, there will be bloodshed. You want to protect the life of, of, of James Meredith and all other people. And under the circumstances at this time, it just wouldn't be fair to him or others uh, to try to register him. At well, then, at what time would it be fair? Well, we, we could wait a... I don't know. It yeah. might be in uh, two or three weeks. It might cool off. Well, well would you undertake to register him in two weeks? Well, now, you know I can't undertake to register myself, but uh, you all might make some progress that way. Yeah, well, we'd be facing... We, unless we get your support you and insurance... Say, I'm, going to, I'm going to cooperate. Uh, I might not know when you're going to register him, you know. I see. Well, now, Governor, what, uh, do you want to talk to Mr. Watkins? I might not know the, what, what your plans were, you see. You, do, you want to, uh, do you want to talk to Mr. Watkins? Then? I'll, I'll be delighted to talk to him, and uh, we'll call you back. Okay, good. Uh, uh, Mr., uh, call the general back? Yeah, I'll call the general, and then I'll be around. All right. I thank appreciate it so much. Thanks, and Governor. I, I thank you for this call. Thank you, Governor. All right. right. All right. Uh, we can't consider moving Meredith as long as the, you know there's a riot outside because he wouldn't be safe. Sir? We couldn't consider moving Meredith if, you, if we haven't been able to restore order outside. That's the problem, Governor. Well, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, Mr. President. Yeah. I'll go up there myself. Well, now, how long will it take you to get there? And I'll get uh, a microphone and tell them that uh, you have agreed to, re to, to be removed. No, no, now, wait a minute. How long is, wait a minute, Governor. Now, how long is it going to take you to get up there? About an hour. Now, I tell you, what, if you want to go up there, you, then you call me from up there, and then we'll decide what we're going to do before you make any speeches about it. Well, all right. 
No well, sense in there. Whatever you, if you'd offer. You see, we don't. We got an hour to go, and that's not. Uh, we may not have an hour, but it won't uh, take you an hour man, to get up there. This man has just died. Did he die? Yes. Which one? State police. That's uh, state police. Yeah. Well, you see, we got to get order up there, and that's what we thought we were going to have. President, please, why don't you? Uh, can't you give an order for her to remove me? How can I remove him, Governor, when there's a, a riot in the street, and he may step out of that building, and something happened to him? I can't remove him under those conditions. Let's get order up there, then we can do something about America. We can surround it with plenty of officials. Well, we've got to get somebody up there now to get order and stop the firing and the shooting. Then you and I will talk on the phone about Meredith. But All first, right. we've got to get order. I'll, I'll call and tell them to get every, every official they can. That's right. Then you and I will talk when they've got the building, when they've got order there, then you and I will talk about what's the best thing to do with Meredith. All right, then. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, well, the, uh, our people say that it's still a very uh, strange situation. They wouldn't uh, feel that uh, they could uh, take a chance of taking them outside that building. Now, if you, if we, can we get these fellows? I hear they got some high-powered rifles up there that have been shooting sp sporadically. Can we get that stopped? How many people have you got there? We hear you only got well, 50. I have approximately 200 there now, Mr. President. That's you got 200? Sir, about 200. Yeah, well, uh, now let me get in touch with my we people. We don't have it. Uh, 210 of 12 uh, patrolmen, you see. I see. Well, now, let me get my people back I'm again. I'm telling you everything in the world. That's right. Well, we got to get this situation under control. That's much more important than anything yeah. else. Well, that's now, right. Let, now, me, uh, uh, let me talk to my people. Let me tell them, find out what the situation is there. They yeah. called me a few minutes ago and said they had some high-powered rifles there, so we don't want to stop Mr. moving President, anybody around. People are wiring me and calling me saying, well, you've given up. I said, I had to say, no, I'm not giving up, not giving up any fight. Yeah, but we don't I want never to. give up. I, I have courage and faith and... And we'll win this fight, you understand. That's just the Mississippi people. Yeah, I understand, but I don't think anybody, even in Mississippi or any place else, wants a lot of people killed. Oh, no, no. And that's I'll, what the governor, that's the most I'll important issue, thing. I'll they issue want. any statement any time about peace and violence. Well, now, here's what we could do. Let's get the maximum number of your state police to get that situation so we don't have sporadic firing. I will be in touch with my people, and then you and I will be talking again in a few minutes about see what we got there then. All right. Thank you, Governor. All right. I'll be back. Thank you. There you are, Hello. sir. There's the president. Hello. Uh, Mr. President. Yes, Governor. Uh, I just talked with Colonel Birdsong, right. who is our director of the Highway right. Patrol, and he assures me that he has approximately 150 men there now. Now, we got a report that they're all in their cars two or three blocks away. Well, I told him, just like you asked me, to get moving. I see. Now, can you get them so that we stop this uh, rifle shooting? That's what we've got to stop. Well, he says he's doing all that he can. He says there's strangers in there. I know. Well, that's what we hear. And uh, he's calling for 50 more, and that'll, that'll put it up around 200. Can they get those students to go to bed? Well, he says he's trying to, and uh, I don't think it'll be long before he can get them all to bed. Okay, well, you stay... Why not? I can't tell. Well, let's stay right on it. But we ought to be... Uh, that's what we got to do before we uh, can uh, do anything. He's, he's reporting uh, constantly to the gentleman who has control of the activities of the troops there. Yeah. And... Uh, he understands that he's done all he can. Well, I think it's very important, uh, Governor, aside from uh, this issue, we don't want a lot of people uh, killed just because they, particularly, uh, evidently two or three guardsmen have been shot, and of course some are marshals, and then that state trooper, so we don't want... Hello? General Abrams calling the President from Millington, Tennessee. Hello. Hello. Hey, Arthur. Yeah. General yes, General. I have a report from General Billingsley. That's right. Now, the Attorney General has him on the other phone. Is that General Billingsley you got? We got him on the other phone. So we'll be talking. The company right. arrived on the campus at 2.15 local time. Right. Okay. Now, General, what about the rest of the... When are these other MPs going to get there, do you know? The uh, 503rd MPs should arrive at approximately 0.430. That's local time there? Local time. That's in, uh, in other words, that's two hours. Time here. That's the group that's set out by truck, is it? Yes, sir. So you're dishing? They're followed by another MP battalion at, that should arrive at 5 o'clock. There's just the length of the battalion between them. In other words, but the next MP group to arrive won't be for two hours, is that correct? That's correct, sir. And then after that, there'll be some more in a half hour. Then what about that battle group? The, uh... The, uh... Just a moment, sir.
Six o'clock, sir. What? Six, Six o'clock. Well, now, General, you ought to consider what kind of communication you're going to set up at that airport because you're going to have people flying in there. Seems to me you ought to have very good communications with that airport as well as the campus. With General, in other words, General Billingsley, you ought to have a communication with the airport. You ought to have a communication with the airport and Billingsley because we're going to have people flying in there all day tomorrow. And then, of course, we've got the problem of transportation and all the rest. So these are all matters that you'll be dealing with, but I think communication is very important. Okay, fine, General. Thank you. Well, now, the thing is, uh, Governor, I want your help in, in getting these state police to continue to help during the day, because they're their own people. And uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, strange troops in there, and we're going to have uh, paratroopers in and all the rest. And I think the state police should be the key, and that depends on you. Well, you have, you have the whole force that we have. Well, now, you the tell them. men are not equipped like you. I understand that, but during the daytime, they can help keep order on these roads and keep a lot of people from coming in. And that's the, I think that uh, that doesn't change your position on the issue, but at least it helps maintain uh, order, which is what we've got to do today. All right, Mr. Thank you, Perry. Governor. I'll stay here now. Thank you very Thank much. You so and keep, much. keep after your state police now. Well, thanks. I'll, I'll call them as soon as we hang up. Thanks. They'll do all they can to keep peace. Okay, thanks, Governor. And when will I hear from you again? I'll be talking to you about noon. All right. My time. Thank you so much. Okay, Governor. Hello. Good morning, Mr. I'm just on my way up there. Now, the only question I had was whether there are any additional proclamations or powers, etc., that we might need in the Mississippi matter if it gets worse and uh, the uh, for arresting people and under what charge and what legal penalties they face and so on. For example, we want to arrest uh, General Walker, and I don't know whether we just arrest him under disturbing the peace or whether we arrest him for more than that. I wonder if, how long are you going to be at the court this morning? Not beyond uh, half past ten. Yeah, well, then I wonder if we can get... Uh, more precise information on where we are legally on arresting people, including the governor, if necessary, and others. Right. And what the penalties are, because we might want to announce that on the radio and television, that anyone involved in any demonstration or anything would be subject to the, this penalty, and, the, uh, and then maybe the general could announce it. Right. All right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Yes, Mr. President. Oh, yeah, I understood they were having uh, some uh, rioting downtown and so on, and throwing rocks and so on at the troops. Now, how are we doing on our schedule? Our schedule is still proceeding as I gave it to you, sir. Yeah. We don't know. Has anybody arrived this morning? Uh, has anybody arrived this morning on those 1700? Not yet. Uh, due in earliest at what? Uh, uh, 10 o'clock their time, is it? Let's see what's the time. Midnight. That would be midday. 11.20. 11.20 their time? Yeah. That's 1.20 our time, yeah. isn't it? Now, that's what, 1,700 more? Yeah, that, uh, let's see, that first increment is 900, yeah. And they're doing it 120. What group is that? Yeah, 120 our time. What group that is? That is the 82nd. Airport. I, I see. Okay. Fine. All right. Are you going to come over to this ceremony? No, Just, I thought I'd better stay here, sir. I see. Well, now, I talked to Secretary McNamara. He said something about you might have be able to have 20,000 troops by midnight. That's right. We are we're taking steps to get them in. Uh, the orders have been given. The only limiting factor may be the weather, which is closing in, but we're developing alternate so that uh, we can get them in some way or other. I see. You mean you might send them to uh, Memphis and then... But if we can't get into Memphis, we'll try Columbus. Now, this may add a little bit of time in getting them back, so we may not be able to finally make it by 12 o'clock, but we'll do everything we can to get them as soon as possible. I see. Okay. Fine. Oh, just a second. Bob is here. Hello, Bobby. Yes. Oh, this is... No, this is the president. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, I think that with the priority the Air Force is giving this, and we're diverting all our MAT aircraft and our troop carrier aircraft, we can get them there by midnight. Right. I say, you coming over for no, this? Sir, I, I just gave my my citation to Ron, right. and he will read it. I thought I'd stay okay. here tomorrow. Okay. Right. I'm fine. Thank, Thank you. you. I got the leadership coming back at 5 this afternoon. Then we begin this uh, uh, blockade. Then uh, we'll continue the surveillance. I would anticipate two or three things. First, that Khrushchev will make a statement that any attack upon Cuba will be uh, the same as he made at the time of the uh, Suez business, will be a, uh, regarded as an attack upon the Soviet Union, be responded to by all the weapons at their command. Number one. Number two is I, I, we have to assume that as this surveillance continues with the U-2s that these SAM sites may shoot one down. At that point, then uh, we would just uh, 
of discussing what action we will take and in, uh, in attacking the SAM side. So I would assume that uh, this will only be the first of a rather of an increasing number of steps. We're not going to be in any position to uh, carry out an invasion for some days because we have to move those troops around from uh, San Diego. But we're going to do all those things and uh, we'll just stay in touch with you this week, which, as I say, we anticipate that it will be uh, getting more intense. As I understand it, uh, now John talked to me about three possibilities. Right. The first one, I told him the only real uh, thing I said was I thought that was completely uh, wrong. And apparently everybody else has seen it. That's right. And I, uh, for the reasons, one is we didn't think we'd get them all as well as we'd have all the disadvantages without finishing the job. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, the second one, the, the difficulty was, and of course here between determining, between second and uh, third, I thought there were a number of reasons on both sides, and of course I couldn't tell about the, the understandings uh, that the government had had with, uh, with uh, the Latin American companies, with NATO, and so on and so on. Right. But uh, so there, I just, uh, my thought was, well, no matter what you find to do, have to do, I, I, will, uh, I will certainly stand hit and will be doing my best. Right, right. To support it. Now, the one thing I didn't quite understand, that you'd, sus you'd suspect that um, the third program would uh, require a number of uh, increasingly serious steps. Right? Well, what we anticipate is first his statement no. of, uh, you know, uh, the sort of usual one. The, but then, of course, the surveillance will continue. Now, we, we, uh, we have to assume that, uh, that uh, they perhaps will shoot down one of these U-2s. Then in that case, and therefore make our surveillance impossible. In that case, of course, uh, we will then have to judge what action to take. But I think that we probably, uh, as I don't expect they're going to discontinue work on these things, I don't expect they're going to withdraw them. And uh, I would think that uh, we probably have that uh, danger in any case. I should think, uh, uh, Mr. President, that what probably will be bothering you the most after this first statement will be the uh, some outcries uh, from all around the world, probably including Latin America and so on. This will, there will be a lot, a lot of talk about the United Nations and so on. Right. The only thing that I said to John is that here's something that we, if, even if you don't get as many people in South America, many governments go along, that once you've taken the, the first step in force, then you will have to, if necessary, to make all these things unilateral decisions. Right. Not, that's right. And that, that's, that's the... That's the big thing, and when uh, you, if you see it becomes uh, time to do something, why you yourself, of course, will have to make a decision. Right, well, two-thirds, if we get the two-thirds, we'll operate under the Rio Treaty. If we don't get the two-thirds, then we'll do it under our own act of yeah, uh, self-defense. Then uh, your, your speech will be 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Then we're going to uh, yeah. go to the U.N. with a, uh, and our position will be the withdrawal of these uh, up there to uh, assist Adlai so that we get... Uh, somebody who's had some experience. Well, Jack, Jack, very good man. Yeah. Well, I, I thank you for telling me, and I will, uh, I uh, personally, uh, I, I think you're really making the only move you can. Yeah, this, it's tough to, uh, as I say, uh, we will, uh, I don't know, we may get into the invasion business before many days are out, yeah. but, uh, but uh, well, of course, the military standpoint, that's a clean-cut thing to do now. That's right. Because that's right. You, you've made up your mind, you've got to get rid of this thing. Right, well, right. The only real way to get rid of it, of course, is the other thing. But if, if having to be concerned with world opinion and uh, and Berlin, brothers, why you got to do a little slower? Well, Berlin is the uh, I suppose uh, that it may be the what they're going to try well, to trade they off. Might, but I, I, I personally, I just don't quite go along, you know, with that uh, thinking, Mr. President. My idea is this: the damn Soviets will do whatever they want. Well, they uh, think it is good for them. Yeah. And I don't believe they relate one situation with another. Uh, That's right. what they find out they can do here and there and the other place. Yeah, yeah. And we're we're already standing at uh, the unit with NATO that if they go into Berlin, that's all of it. Right. That means uh, they've got to to look out that they don't get a, a terrific uh, blow themselves. Right, right. And I, 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 I don't, it might be, I could be all wrong with my own conviction is you will not find a great deal of relationship. Let me ask you. try to make it that way. Uh, General, what about if the Soviet Union, uh, Khrushchev, announces uh, tomorrow, which I think he will, that if we attack Cuba that uh, it's going to be nuclear war? 
Uh, and uh, what's your judgment as to uh, the chances they'll fire these things off if we invade Cuba? Oh, uh, I don't believe it. Yeah, you know, they will. In other words, you would take that risk if the situation seems no, desirable. As a matter of fact, uh, what can you do? Uh -huh. uh, you, if this thing is such a uh, serious thing uh, here on our flank, that uh, we're going to be uneasy, and we know what this uh, thing's happening now. All right, you, you got to use something. Right. Something may uh, make these people shoot them off. I just don't believe this will. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> in any event, of course, I'll say this. I'd want to keep my own people very alert. Yeah. <laughs> No, hang on tight. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, General. All right, thanks. All right, thanks. But, uh, as I understood, there's some report that the Russian ships were not going to start, that we were going to have to sink them. Uh, or in order to stop them, uh, I thought that uh, we, or we were going to have to fire on them. I was wondering whether the instructions on how that's to be done, or where they're to be shot at and so on, to cause the minimum of damage. And in addition, if they're boarded, it's very possible the Russians will fire at them as they board, and we'd have to fire back and have quite a slaughter. I would think we'd want two or three things. First, I think we'd want to have some control over cameras aboard these boats, so that we don't have a lot of people shooting a lot of pictures, which in the press might be... Yeah, we're going to control all the picture taken. Oh, yeah, on the boats? Yeah. They all are turning their cameras. Secondly, I don't know enough about the ships, but whether they ought to fire and whether they ought to go through three or four steps, such as asking them to stop, they don't stop, asking them to have their crew come above the deck so that they don't be damaged, and three, so that we have this record made. Maybe yes, you can talk to somebody about yes, that. Yes, we've got a, instructions to sink land, which, which start with those steps, shot across the bow, shot through the rudder. Uh, shot through the rudder. Oh, oh, then okay. a boarding party and then uh, order the crews to come on deck and the minimum amount of force at each stage. Now, right. hey, we haven't thought of everything, but we'll, we'll take a okay, look at Okay, fine. How'd those uh, photographic expeditions go this morning, you know? No instant. They, uh, they were back a couple of hours ago. We'll see the pictures uh, later. Oh, I see. You're yeah. getting that one from me, aren't you, of those Florida bases? That's right. Okay. Have you taken a look at West Palm Beach? Yeah, the Air Force is doing that. We can look at all of the right. spiritual possibilities down there. Okay, good. Did you, did you, did you cite anything about Nelson Rockefeller? Are you going to leave that? Wait a minute now. What about the... Uh, uh, we sent him a telegram saying that I'd be in touch with him later. I thought we'd meet at 6, but what my thought was that we'd bring down the Civil Defense Committee. If we bring down every governor, then it seems to me we're kind of in the obligation to bring every congressman down to brief. No, he just wanted to have the Civil Defense Committee. Well, then I, that's what we'll be in touch with him about, right. I, I, because uh, I'm hoping Pittman and uh, Ed McDermott will come today anyway. Then we'll send a wire from them to uh, him and arrange that meeting. Do it Good. right? Yeah. All, All right. right. Okay, All right. right. Well, Mr. President, what I, I never said anything about further action. What I did was to cite the sentence in your Monday night speech yeah. in which, uh, you know, you had said, I don't have the text in front of me, the essence of it being, that if this uh, threat... Yeah, I understand that, but that's the sort of stuff that's got to come from me and the White House. Christ, we're meeting every morning on this to control this, the escalation. I don't want to just be... The fact that you refer back to my speech, that then gives them a lead headline saying the United States is planning further action. And we had a long talk about it this morning, and it was agreed that the talk about the statement on the build-up would come from the White House, and that we wouldn't say anything about what action we're going to take. And we don't want to, when you make a reference back to my speech, it then gives them a lead that further action is going to be taken. Uh, we've got to get this under control, I think, because it's too important. I want it to be run out of the White House. Yeah under me, to Salinger, to you people, and to Sylvester. And nothing dealing with the Cuban crisis of any importance is to go out until it goes through Salinger and comes to me. Because uh, I'm not, uh, I don't want to be critical, but the, the problem is when you say further action is going to be taken, then they all say what action? And it moves this escalation up a couple of days when we're not ready for it. I, I'm sorry. So therefore, I, you have to be goddamn careful. You just can't make references to past speeches because that gives them a new headline, and they've got now got it. 
and every reporter in town is going to be putting together Pierre Salinger's release yeah. about the uh, mi missile thing with your thing that further action, and we're going to find ourselves getting out of control. Okay. Well, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Okay. I was under, under the impression that you had asked that this be done. Well, now, how did you get that impression? I got it from Jim Greenfield. Well, now, wait a sec. I got Pierre right here. He says he's under the impression from Jim Greenfield that we asked that this be done. Lincoln, that's what he did. He referred to my speech. Well, wait just a second. I'll put it on to Pierre. This is, as I say, you just got. We got to get this coordinated. Wait a second. You did not use the word. You didn't use the word further action yourself, did you, Link? No, indeed. Of course not. Well, then I think that the, that, that the Washington News is way out. They can't. I don't see how they can. If you if they if you call attention to the speech, which I've been doing for two days. And then they pick out just one quote out of the speech and use it in the headline. I think that's that's on the newspaper. I don't think... Yeah, I think so. I'll get back to you. Hello? Yes, please. Oh, it's the general on there. I'll put it on. Yes, sir. Ready? Hello? General, how are you? Pretty good, Oh, fine. General, I just wanted to bring you up to date on this uh, matter because I know of your concern about it. We got uh, Friday night got a message from uh, Khrushchev which uh, said that uh, he would uh, withdraw these missiles and technicians and so on, providing we did not plan to invade Cuba. We uh, then got a message, uh, the public one, the next morning in which he said he would do that if we withdrew our missiles from Turkey. We uh, then, as you know, uh, issued a statement that uh, we couldn't get into that deal. So uh, we then got this message this morning. So we now uh, have to wait to see how it unfolds, and there's a good deal of complexities to it. Uh, if the, uh, the withdrawal of these missiles, technicians, and the cessation of uh, subversive activity by them well, we just have to set up satisfactory procedures to determine whether these actions will be carried out. So I would think that uh, if we can do that, we'll be uh, find our interests advanced, even though it may be only one more chapter in a rather long story as far as Cuba's concerned. Of course, but, uh, Mr. President, did he, uh, does he put any conditions on whatsoever in that? No, except uh, that uh, we're not going to invade Cuba. Yeah. That's the only one we've got uh, now. But well, we don't plan to invade Cuba under these conditions anyway. No. So if we can get them out, we're better off by far. That's, that's correct. I, I quite agree. I just uh, wondered whether he was trying to, uh, knowing we would keep our word, whether he would try to uh, engage us in any kind of statements or commitments that would finally one day could be uh, very uh, embarrassing. For instance, suppose they got in, suppose they start to... Uh, uh, bombard at Guantanamo. Right. Uh, what I, I'm getting at, I quite agree this is a very, uh, uh, my think, conciliatory move. Right. Oh, well, I agree. Oh, yeah, that's right. I think what we've got to do is keep, that's why I don't think the Cuban story can be over yet. Uh, I think we will retain sufficient freedom to protect our interests if he, if he, uh, if he, uh, if they engage in subversion, if they uh, attempt to do any aggressive acts and so on, then all bets are off. In addition, my guess is that uh, by the end of next month, we're going to be toe-to-toe -to -toe in Berlin anyway. So that uh, I think this is uh, important uh, for, the, for the time being because it uh, requires quite a step down for really for Khrushchev. On the other hand, I think that, uh, as we all know, they just uh, probe and... Uh, their words unreliable, so we just have to stay uh, busy on it. Um, as I've uh, observed before, uh, the president is one thing about it. They, these people, do not keep the queen. And I think it's been a mistake to equate uh, Berlin with Cuba or anything else. Right. They take any spot in the world, they don't care where it is. That's right. And, they, and it's just the question is are you in such a place you either can't or won't resist? That's right. For yeah. example, we got into Tibet. Nothing is good to bet. Yeah. Up that mountainous country, and we couldn't even reach it. Right. 
And so uh, what, what we do then is the first itself, that's all. Right, right. Now, uh, so they get to and they probe when, it, when you can't do anything. Then if they get another place where they think that uh, you just won't for some reason or other, yeah. why then they go ahead. That's so right. I, I think you're doing exactly right. right. Go ahead, but uh, just uh, let them know that you won't be the aggressor. And, but if the other guy then you've always got the right to that's determine right. whether the other guys would be just. Well, we'll stay right at it, and I'll keep in touch with you, General. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you. President Truman, please. Thank you. What? He'll be with you in just one minute, Mr. President. All right. All right. Hello. Hello, Mr. Harry Truman. Hello. How are you, uh, Mr. President? Well, I'm all right, and I'm just pleased to death the way these things came out. Well, we'll just stay at it, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, bring you up to date on it. We got uh, a letter from him on Friday night, uh, which uh, was rather conciliatory on these withdrawals. Then on Sunday, Saturday morning, uh, 12 hours after the other letters received, we got this entirely different letter about the missile bases in Turkey. That's the way they do things. Then, uh, well, then we rejected that. Then they came back with uh, and accepted the earlier proposals. So I think we're going to have a lot of difficulties, but at least uh, we are on the, uh, we making some progress about getting these missiles out of there. And in addition, I think that Khrushchev's had to some difficulties in uh, maintaining his position. I, my judgment is that it's going to make things tougher in Berlin because the fact he's had some of uh, something of a setback in Cuba is going to make him uh, That's right. rougher in uh, Berlin, but at least uh, it's a little better than it was a couple of days ago. Well, you're on the right track. You just keep after me. That's the language they understand, just what you give. All right, good. And they've been asking me for comments, and I said the President of the United States, no man can comment on it. All right. <laughs> okay. Good. Take care. I'll be in touch with you. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. I certainly appreciate the call. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Right. Hello? Mr. President? John, congratulations. Thank you, sir. My God, I watched that with interest, and I saw you were running ahead of us, so I knew you were in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. We... Well, NBC did a real poor job on that election night, my right. Yeah, I know, because they counted the Dallas and Houston ones first, made it look much closer than it was, didn't they? That's right. What'd you win by? Uh, about 125,000 votes. Yeah, well, they made it, you know, they were running it neck and neck, but that's what, uh, they don't know what the hell they're doing, though. Uh, it never was neck and neck. I started getting these counties in here, and I saw these rural counties, I saw it running neck and neck in Houston. See, uh, out of over 200,000 votes, 100,000 votes, I lost Harry County by 1,500 votes. Yeah, yeah, and They yeah. thought they'd beat me 40,000 there. What about Dallas? Dallas? I lost the hell out of it. Did you? Did you? But did I lost it about 21,000. Did you have a newspaper? Uh, which one? Did you have both those papers? I had, I had one of them. I had the Dallas Times-Herald, and the news was neutral. They didn't, uh, they were yeah. helping me, actually. Yeah. But they went crazy up there, Mr. President. They, they, that, that town, they got a bunch of junior executives up there, and society gals, and they're in open rebellion. They beat, uh, they beat five of their real good conservative Democratic legislators. Did they really? Play with elected Republicans? Yeah. yeah. They just went crazy. Yeah. The business leaders were for me, and they were for all the Democratic slates, but uh, they're just a bunch of, uh, that's the way I know to call them, but just junior executives and, and these society gals, and they've just got them a crusade going, and they just wiped the slate clean. What did uh, what did we uh, what did we lose Dallas by? Do you remember in 60? Yes, sir, you lost over 60, uh, over 60,000 votes. 60,000 votes. Well, I got, uh, you know, they're up there talking to me about, remember that, about having that federal building down there and all the rest of that stuff. Yep. I don't know why we do anything for Dallas. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, they just murdered all of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, are we going to change that now? Our party's gone down. The last, the last six years, I don't want to throw rocks at Price, at yeah. Price Daniel. But frankly, he just let this thing go to hell. Yeah. Party's no leadership. And we saved a lot of it. I carried... Uh, 205 out of the 254 counties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, 
And they, they had a hate campaign going, very frankly. They were running against Cuba and against you and the vice president, me okay. and Billy Solis. And it was a protest. It was a hell of a protest vote. Yeah, yeah. But uh, really wasn't, uh, wasn't on state issues, but we came out in real good shape. And yeah. everybody stick with that. We elected the congressman at large. We lost Slick Rutherford, but that was a, more or less of a personal thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lindley Beckworth got by, and uh, Bob Kishi did. Although his was fairly close. Was Casey close? Yeah, about yeah. 10,000 votes yeah, out yeah. of over uh, 200,000. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in San Antonio, the whole slate, the only place we really got hurt was in the Midland area and in Dallas. Yeah, but yeah. we can, uh, we're going to start rebuilding this party down here. I'll tell you, it's going to be a hell of a different story in 64. Yeah, yeah. They, they've organized now. They knew where every vote they had. They had them on IBM cards. They knew the names, they knew the telephone numbers, and they knew the street address of every vote they had in every big city in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hell, they just got them out to vote. They voted as high as 85 and 90 percent of their strength. Yeah, yeah. And we voted uh, 60 percent. That's it, isn't it? That's what's sure. good. But yeah. I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't build an organization in, uh, in a year's time. See, they've been building in Dallas for 10 years since 52. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, basically, we came through in real good shape, and 125,000 votes in the light of the the money that they spent, the effort that they put out was a pretty resounding victory down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so you, you ought to be pleased by it. Well, I'm glad you won, John. That's very good. And, uh, I want to come I want to come up before long and see you. I don't have any real business, but if there's anything I can do, you just let me know. Okay, good. I'll see you soon, John. All right, sir. Thank you for calling. Okay. Senator said he was informed the United States has suspended low-level reconnaissance flights over Cuba and is using special, quote, electronic ear, unquote, planes to listen in from outside Cuban territory. Goldwater, an Air Force Reserve Major General, said in an interview that he, told, that he was told the low-level flights would discontinue February 9th, three days after Secretary Ralph McNamara's television reports on the Cuban military situation. An informed government source said this was an error. So I said low-level fights were being carried out as the need for right, them arose, right. etc. Go on. A member of the Senate Armed Services Committee said that, quote, electronic airplanes, unquote, are, are equipped with sensitive devices, able to register details of what is going on in Cuba down to the point of detecting a generator in operation. I don't know how much truth there is to it, but I'm sure it's... There isn't any truth that I know of, but he shouldn't be talking about I know electronic it. gear. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's fantastic. Somebody... Uh, if it's true, it's a bad security thing. Indeed. I'll check on that part. I saw the first part of the story. I hadn't seen the electronic gear. I talked to Mac about the, the uh, statement that he made about low-level flights and our rebuttal to it. And I suggested to Mac that if this continues, we ought to run a, a low-level flight if necessary just to refute him. Yeah. So we could pick out an isolated target and run it against that. Yeah, right. Well, uh, what a... The electronic stuff. Is there some new electronic? I, no, I'm certain there isn't, Mr. President. I'll look into that. I haven't... Uh, Good. The other thing is the story of Mark Watson's in the Baltimore Sun about that uh, flying over those carriers. Yes. Now, he makes the point... Uh, no, it's Paul Ward in the Baltimore Sun. Diplomatic authorities here, this is Washington, tended today to link the latest four Soviet flights over United States naval vessels over the current Kremlin campaign against the projected NATO multilateral force, noting the Kennedy administration recently has advertised a preference for using Polaris armed service ships instead of submarines to make up such a force. They suggested one. The Soviet reconnaissance flights over the aircraft carriers Kitty Hawk Enterprise, Princeton, and Forrestal, which Senator McMahon were signed only in part to collect military intelligence data. Two, that so four Soviet overflights staged between January 27th and February 23rd in a way McNamara called, quote, a pattern, unquote, also were designed to lessen the little enthusiasm the United States NATO allies have shown for mobile out nuclear have shown for mobile out nuclear force composed of surface vessels by reminding them, etc., that they had long-range bombers capable of hunting down such ships. Diplomatic authorities, he has stressed in that connection, McNamara's notation that Soviet aerial surveillance had been chronic and hitherto conducted only by short and medium, so on. Uh, I don't... Uh, we, we have a reply to that, which proved very effective with von Hassel, yeah. uh, that the, the uh, surface ships carrying Polaris missiles would be merchantmen, not easily recognized as these carriers were. Furthermore, that they would be lying in the coastal waters uh, and in the bays and, and channels of, of the Western European coast, and quite a different situation. 
We'll yeah. get in touch with Watson and give him the same story. Yeah, well, this was Ward. I guess, oh, right. I don't know whoever he is. The only thing is, I was wondering, have we given, I suppose we have, uh, Merchant, the sort of most up-to-date military thinking? Oh, yes. The... Yes, we have, indeed. He has, and he has Admiral Lee with him, as a matter of fact. Who... What is our uh, private naval opinion about the ability of the Russians to get these ships? Uh, the private naval opinion of as to the ability of the Soviets to, to uh, uh, follow the the merchant shipping is that it would be almost impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that were they to follow the merchant shipping, uh, we would be aware of it. We can interpose our submarines between the Soviet craft and the, the uh, Polaris carrying merchant shipping. And we would thereby be aware of the, the uh, Soviet attempt to follow them. And this in itself would be warning of some possible Soviet attempt against the merchant shipping. You mean if they picked where, where if the air started to follow the yeah, ball? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would, uh, but well, anyway. I think we have effective answers to, to the war-type claim. As a matter of fact, in talking to Von Hassel about it, he seemed uh, uh, to completely accept our explanation of why the surface craft were, were relatively invulnerable in, in European-type waters. Now, when you get off the coast of China, uh, that's something else again. This is the argument we're trying to use, in, to, use to establish our requirement for Polaris submarines uh, and the European requirement for a surface fleet. Yeah, yeah. Well, in addition, uh, if you took the idea that you'd, you'd give up all surface ships, if you could get the idea they all could be caught, you'd certainly give up all carriers. If, uh, I mean, we wouldn't be building any carriers if we thought they were so easy to detect and destroy. That's right. Frankly, I don't know how the Soviets detect these carriers. I've asked the Navy to look into it. They have yeah. an easy explanation that the Soviets are aware of the passage of the carriers through the Straits of Gibraltar and of the sailing of the carriers from Norfolk. I don't think that's it's quite that easy, and therefore we're, we're uh, analyzing in great detail the path of these carriers, the speed of the carriers, and the ways in which the Soviets might have picked them up. I just don't have an answer to it at right. the moment. Okay, fine. I'll follow it, and we'll also get in touch with Ward. We might take a look at whoever is at Goldwater's latest thing about the electronic I, ear. I will okay, thanks. Right. Hello? Mr. President, yeah. on the two points you raised this morning, I right. talked to General Carroll of DIA, who says we have no new equipment on our electronic intelligence aircraft. It's simply the typical electronic intelligence equipment, which is sensitive to electronic emanations and perhaps... Uh, could pick up generators in, associated with SAM sites, for example. In any case, it's a violation of security. So I call General LeMay, who is, is a close friend of Goldwater's, and, and I ask him to get in touch with Goldwater and handle it directly. And we're also going to try to get a, uh, a senator on, on the Armed Services Committee to say in the Senate that this is a violation of security. There we go. We'll handle it that way. Now, secondly, on the Ward article, we will brief Ward, as well as other newspaper correspondents, on a background basis as to the difference between maintaining surveillance over a, a fleet, including the carriers and the other escort ships, on the one hand, following a, a known and prescribed course between the U.S. and Gibraltar, versus maintaining surveillance over merchant ships uh, using the coastal waters, channels, bays, harbors, etc. Of, of Western Europe. I think we can stop that story that way. The, uh, we ought, I noticed, I read the Manchester Guardian, they had, another, they had a story about this problem, the fact that the United States itself does not use surface vessels for Polaris indicates that they're not as good. Of course, uh, well, they, we've got a real problem with Great Britain. We have to let them use some of that because of their decision to use yeah. Polaris submarines. But as far as Western Europe is concerned, we have a good, strong argument as to why they should use surface ships, and we use submarines. Of course, if we were arguing submarines, they'd be around saying that they have to buy them in the United exactly. States and they get too much control from and, the United States. And the two strong arguments, therefore, in favor of surface ships for Western Europe are, one, they can build them, and two, their waters are entirely different than the waters we have to operate our subs in yeah. around the world. Yeah. And these two arguments, I, I've used them on Von Hassel, and, and uh, Admiral Lee is with Livy Merchant and using them in the North Atlantic Council. We talked to Lee by telephone yesterday, and he says that that they're acceptable. All right. All right. Good. Okay, fine. Sir. Thank you. We were just talking about the fact that in an interrogation last week of the Stennis Committee, Senator Goldwater asked some questions about the use of the carrier aircraft from es the aircraft from the carrier Essex yeah. with their markings painted out, which yeah. Well, we figure that uh, somebody over there has told them about, you know, that thing on Wednesday morning yeah. where we 
and that uh, therefore it's either Dirks is going to spring it or Goldwater is going to spring it, and they're going to try to spring it in such a way that it looks like there was U.S. air cover and that you were wrong and I was wrong in saying there wasn't. Now, the question is, how do, what exactly is it? We're, we're going to get Max Taylor to look up exactly. Oh, are you familiar with what yeah. was, What happened on that? Uh, did, we, did we paint out the markings yeah, on the plane? Yeah, we painted out the markings of the plane. How many planes? And I think there were three planes. Yeah. And they flew air cover for an hour. Yeah, but over, didn't see anybody. Over the beach. Yeah. And uh, they were supposed to give uh, air cover to the B-26s that were coming in. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, they between the, all of them, they got the hours mixed up. I think you gave them from 7 to 8 or something. Yeah. And uh, they must have thought it was 7, CIA thought it was 7 to 8 Central American time. Yeah. So the result was that the B-26s came in an hour late, late and were all shot down, yeah. or two of them shot down. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably the ones that had the Americans. Yeah. I think uh, that that has been in the paper about the fact that uh, they, uh, they flew this air cover for an hour. Is that been in the paper? Uh, I've seen references to it in the paper. I don't know if any formal story has been written on it, but uh, it's been in the paper that they, uh, and it's been in U.S. News and World Report yeah. that they uh, specifically, I'm almost sure, I've read it someplace oh, in the was. last uh, couple of months yeah. about the fact that they've, uh, that they uh, flew for that well, hour. My guess is it's going to come out. You're just trying to figure out how to get it out. We could say it's been all printed. Otherwise, Dirksen will announce that the United States, painted with their paintings marked out, flew over the Bay of Pigs and were only used an hour, and therefore either you were wrong or I was wrong and not using them more, and so on and so forth. So we're trying to think about how to well, go. Well, I think if somebody could look up uh, uh, where it's appeared in the newspapers, do you have that kind of people over there? <laughs> I would think that's a rather difficult assignment. Not really. It isn't? No, I mean, just looking to, if they have an index and they got it on the Bay of Pigs, and then <laughs> <laughs> when they go down Wednesday, <laughs> 6 o'clock. Yeah. But I'm sure it's been U.S. News. It was been in U.S. news. Yeah. Today. In fact, uh, I think it was in, the, in their answer to me. I think they put it in, but I think it was in even before that. They had an answer to you. Yeah. U.S. News did. Yeah. yeah. What other ways do you have? How would you handle it, uh, the uh, committee? Or? Well, again, I think probably go back to the fact that the Congress was informed about this. Was it? Yeah. Well, I'm sure they were. They told everything else. Right. right. Um, Well, I think it's awfully important if we could get the fact that that was out. Uh, I mean, there was some mention of it in the newspaper some time ago, and we could document that. Okay, I'll see if we can find out. All right. Hello, Jack. The thing, of course, to remember on this, I don't know how much we're going to get into it, but the thing to remember on this is this, uh, what you did on that day, Tuesday for Wednesday was something that was added to the plan. Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, not something that was taken away or was in uh, a plan that was made inadequate by some deficiency and in, in, uh, withdrawal of something. Yeah, that's but, right. But you added that on Tuesday. Yeah. It's never been planned before, and this, this plan specifically said that this wouldn't be done. Yeah. It was something that you added in order to help. You heard about uh, But, I, you know, if somebody's going to say something in the Senate about it. Yeah, well, you know how they make everything look lousy these days. You know, uh, Roland Evans said he talked to Dirksen. Dirksen said, I don't quite get this. He said, wait, can you? Go by. What? But, you know, just say, I don't know. They, I think the Kennedys are planning something. They're thinking to trap us into this. Because <laughs> they're pretty smart, are they? Oh, that's what we have. We haven't figured out how to close the trap. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We haven't quite figured out. Uh, but we'll learn it. But it just shows you, boy, what that press is, doesn't it? Yeah, but God, still the poll. What? Were you down to 70%? When? What? When was this? The Gallup poll. When was that? Oh, about two days ago. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah. It went 76% to 70. Yeah. yeah. But your popularity is 70% now. And yeah. You're, you'd break 50-50 with the Republicans. What? 70%, 18% are against you. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't care what the, the press must be doing you some good. Well, what? And then you'd break 50-50? You'd do 50-50 with the Republicans. Oh, you I mean that approval it. and disapproval? Yeah. And then the, the uh, independents. Yeah, I, I didn't see that post. Was this in the post? I don't know what paper. I read it going up on the plane Wednesday or Thursday. You think you got trouble. You ought to see what's happening in Nelson Rockefeller. Why? Why? Well, in all the bars, they uh, call every drink a Nelson 
cocktail, a Rockefeller cocktail. Just ev everything the same except it's 15 percent more. Do they really? Oh, and all the, you walk along the streets and out in the front. Yeah. It says come in and buy a, Nelson, uh, a Rockefeller cocktail. Everything costs 15 percent more. Would you, in every bar. How would you like that? Following you around. Yeah, but you know, and well, he's lucky those papers aren't published. Well, and did you see the uh, story about him in uh, New Washington? Washington? Yeah, yeah. That's not a complete plus. Yeah. I think he's really having his problems. Yeah. Troubles. You're not. <laughs> you can go on television. We've dropped six percent in a month, have we? Well, it's January. Boy, since that Congress comes back. Yeah, and it gets a little bit more partisan. But imagine seventy percent. Yeah, better than you were in sixty. Okay.
you know, you know, the CIA or McCone look good at the expense of the administration. There's a lot of talk about them on the Hill and everything. I'd like to have John know about that. So maybe he didn't decide it wasn't so wise. Yeah. You're, gonna, you're not going to be seeing him, are you? He's going yeah, I'm going to see him Thursday, Wednesday. He's coming to the house for dinner. Uh, well, he's going up tomorrow to testify. Well, well you might give it to him Tuesday. He's better, though, has he, on his testimony? Yeah, I guess he has, though, the word, well, that thing, of, uh, I don't know where Mark Charles got that thing, you know? Did he, he get, get it from McCone? McCone, that's what he implied, Ed Guffman. Yeah, well, I mean, that's not, uh, you know, giving the dates when he sent the messages and everything, because he never sent the message to any, why didn't he come back from his honeymoon? Well, I know, but, huh? I mean, you know, I understand. <laughs> well, I think that's the only thing that, I mean, he isn't going to... Yeah, I don't think Marcus Charles was too impressed. Yeah. I mean, the way he talked, he just said that that's where this stuff's coming from, and, that's, and, they, and they're sticking it to you, the administration. So he just wanted to tell us yeah. that that's going on. Well, I spoke to you the other day about this transportation problem. Yeah. Well, we have another one now, the B&O, C&O railroad merger. Yeah. The unions are very strong for us entering this case and entering it actively. Uh, it uh, went before the board, now it's before the courts, and they want us to try to get it, uh, bring in a, uh, a, 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 an ask that it be sent back before the board. Yeah. Um, the companies, on the other hand, are very anxious to go ahead with the merger. Yeah. Uh, from our examination of the facts here, we find that nobody really in government has ever examined to determine whether this is a good merger or a bad merger. And it's yeah. been before the government really for a year and a half now. What does Dan Martin's group say? Well, they don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and Mike, uh, we talked to Mike Feldman, and he, he admits that nobody knows. Yeah. But uh, we don't know what effect this merger is going to have on future mergers. Yeah. And uh, so we're really shooting in the dark, and it has it. You know, the unions feel very strongly about it, and then, of course, business feels very strongly on the other side about it. So no matter what we do, it, uh, it's going to have an effect on one group or another, and and uh, and, uh, and what we're doing is uh, we're... So what do you suggest? Like, what do you well, suggest? I think that if we could get... Uh, uh, urge once again if we could get some, somebody in there. Well, I can't do anything about Dan Mott just now, because we've got a whole transportation bill up there in front of Magnuson and everything, and Magnuson's got a... I mean, Martin, Magnus, Martin sponsors, so I can't boot him out well, right now. Can we get somebody at the White House who could be re assigned to that responsibility? Well, do nothing if but if you can suggest anybody, I'll be glad to take them on. I'll see if I can find somebody. Feldman's supposed to be looking around for somebody. And uh, just look at Merge. And if you've got a name over there, some bright fellow who's got some sense, I'll be glad to take them on. Okie dokie. Okay. Right on. and we're going to reconsider it and we want to restudy the contract and all that crap. I don't know how they can... I know, and I, wouldn't, I, mean, I think probably a lot of that stuff comes out of McClellan or out of that goddamn staff up there. And, think, and then he's acknowledged the right of the Senate to review the contract, some crappy stuff. But I just wanted to... Uh, I just figured that we'd just go ahead. I was just talking to Senator McNamara, and he says everybody says McNamara's right, so yeah. I think we'd let Jerry Handelman... Proceed. Well, I th yeah, I think that that's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so is, is McNamara? Well, I think he's fine. Uh, you know, I think he's yeah. fine. He's so mad. Yeah. Well, John's a real bastard, isn't he? When yeah. mealy mouthy. Well, who do you think he spoke to after? Well, I think he scoop. Scoop. Scoop he said, scoop. 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 See the other. De who would be the other Democrat? Sam Irwin. Yeah. Sam Irwin. Okay. Then I talked about. And then Sco Scoop must have said, uh, wouldn't you know? He doesn't pay that much attention to Jerry Adleman. Yeah. Scoop must have said, uh, we can't take this, and this is the review by themselves, so we won't do that. Yeah. So then he gets in, and then we come see him, and he gets these questions. Yeah. Well, and the, uh, they say, well, why ask the questions? That'll prove you're on uh, their side. This is uh, what I imagine. Yeah. And uh, and uh, then uh, you know you're. So, well, why? so you see, he's got the foot in both camps. I take the questions, and he doesn't ask, ask them, and then. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, so that nobody up there is going to criticize. Now he's going to be belly aching around the Senate. I have all this pressure from all sides. I'm just trying to be fair, and I have made up my mind. And I'm, you know, I have the pressure from one side. And yeah, but I just want to wait and then just let that dinosaur go right down the hopper. Scare old I hope you are. Aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm sure going to talk to somebody about that. Well, yeah. scoop. Right. right. They've been real bastards. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we'll oh, go. Jack. Yeah. Uh, I just talked to John McCone, and we yeah. got the thing down pretty much where the, the, the at least the, the ammunition, etc. These guys were very original, but they got it, the uh, ammunition here in Alexandria, Virginia. Yeah. And then they got a small boat, put two uh, outboards in the back, went 55 miles an hour. 55 miles an hour. Yeah. And then they got a little smaller boat. This their boat was about to take us 25, 26 
and then they get a little smaller boat, put a small outboard on it, filled it with explosives, and ran up alongside the ship and started the outboard motor and ran it into the ship. And where'd they jump off? Well, either that or they ran it off, you see, from their own little bigger boat. There are five of them. Yeah. So they were had some guts. But I spoke to them Did about... they blow the boat up? Yeah, well, I guess either yeah. that. I think they might have sung it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I spoke to them about prosecuting these fellows. Yeah. And I guess it's quite clear they violated the law. Yeah. And he said he got a call from Dick Russell yesterday. He was sore as hell. I said, to him, I hope nobody's planning to take any action against these people. Because he said, uh, you people launched an invasion back in 1961. It wasn't successful. Now these people are doing something, and it is successful. And what are you trying to do? That's typical of him, isn't it? Yeah. So you, at least you know that side of it. Yeah, but one's against Cuba. I don't mind if they blow up some Cuban ships, but yeah, they blow up a Russian ship. Yeah, or went into Cuba and caused some... Yeah. And, but not to come back and keep saying about the fact that it comes from the United States. Yeah. You know, the, or that they... Their plans originate in the United States. Is that what they announced? Well, that's what, you know, they have the press conference and all the rest of it. They, they have another one? They have another no, one? but the first group. The first one. And then they publicize it. And, you know, everybody knows about this. I think that's the... There are two things. First, that the fact it's against Russian sh uh, Russians. And the uh, second thing, that they give it such wide publicity that they're doing it. Yeah. The time. But isn't that typical of Russell? What did John McCone say? Well, he said... Uh, I don't know what he said to him. Yeah. <laughs> he was a little... Uh, but uh, he agreed that they weren't doing any good anyway. Yeah. So. But anyway, I'll let you know later on today. What would be, uh, you hate to prosecute these fellows, but, but I don't just want to make it goddamn sure that they don't do it anymore. But I don't see how you can do it, make sure. Unless you do? Yeah. And, I, and uh, hell, I don't see how you can do it. I mean, they, you know, this, this happened a week after the last time yeah. we said that. We made it quite clear to the other people. Is this a different group? Yeah, it's a rival group. Oh, it's a rival group. Yeah. Yeah. They ought to just stay out of the United States, shouldn't they? What will you arrest them for? I think it's the Logan Act. Yeah. Maybe you could about wait about three days for you. Well, in any case, I, you know, I'll talk to you first. But, I'll, and I'll but we ought to have John McComb brief, so if anybody speaks, because they'll all be talking to him. And John ought to endorse our course of action. I mean, I don't want him saying, yeah, well, I didn't want to well, do Well, then it. I think that, uh, that, you see, the Cottrell Committee had a meeting on this, and I just yeah. found out about it last night, yeah. what they should do, and I don't think it ever came out very clearly. Yeah. So it might be that you'd want to bring uh, four or five people involved together and just... McCone and you and, and the uh, Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense. Yeah. Now, I got a call from Secretary of State last night. He said, I hope you prosecute them. Yeah. So I think everybody should okay. get their views over. Right now. Okay. Hello. Oh, Jack? Yeah, how do you think Newsweek was to you? Oh, well, I thought it was all right. They didn't say anything very new, did they? No, but I thought it was fine. I thought it was did good. You? Especially if you read Time magazine. Have you read them yet? Yeah, God, that's mean. Yeah. That's I saw Harry Luce today. Did you, had you seen Time at the time you saw him? Yeah. Did you say anything? Oh, I gave it to him for 45 minutes. He says, well, I've been out in Phoenix. It doesn't seem that bad to me. I said, well, listen. It's bad to me. God, I thought they were bad. They really yeah. went out of their way on that yeah. damn thing, yeah. didn't they? But isn't that peculiar? That they, you see, it shows that this. He's really losing his grip. He's here. He's in to see me to ask me to come up to that dinner, you know. Yeah. And he's coming in the morning. He comes in. You'd think they'd at least give yeah. me, he'd give me a soft soap. That would have been much yeah. more difficult. What did you say to him? Well, I left it with him in the morning, sort of. Uh, let's get a few uh, good ones out of you. But then I decided, uh, you know, and said, I said, I'll let you know later if I can come. But I just thought I don't want to leave no. it in doubt because I, he, he will write a couple of good ones. And then I'd have to go. And I think uh, for the Newsweek and Graham and everybody would think that was a. And uh, in addition, I think probably for me to be up there for time after what has what obviously been, would really look like a... And we wrote out the mistakes they made on uh, just on the, the one thing, which was on the Cuban prisoners, and just incredible. I mean, how many... They just, yeah. I mean, they just don't make an effort, do they? No, it's, uh, you know, it's a real... I mean, they're just didn't mean to tell up there, but I don't think he registers on it or something. He didn't, uh, he doesn't I don't see think he registers on it. No, you know, they're awfully fair during... They were good in the campaign, and that was because... Furbringer's the real. He's the, he's the son of a bitch up there. And he, you see, he was out in the campaign. They're pretty good. So, I mean, I don't think Luce is hostile. I think he just, you know, he hasn't got any sensitivity. He doesn't probably like the thing much anyway, but he hasn't got any sensitivity. He couldn't, he didn't think, he would think this was bad, even though there were five letters to the editor that all stuck. So, anyway, I thought I'd just write was it. Tell him I didn't think I'd go. Was he jolly? Oh, yeah, he's very agreeable, very pleasant. Uh, what I called you about is this damn school construction. Yeah. You know, for these schools down and, and these bases. Yeah. Uh, it, had you wanted the schools to be put up? 
No, I haven't really given this matter any thought at all. Yeah. I, I just, well, they understood over at HEW. You know, uh, Rivikoff announced it last March, yeah. and as I understood it, you weren't that's right. exactly happy about that. Well, well I, I didn't know. What, that's right. And then they, uh, and it's, it's quite ridiculous, actually, but then, then they announced back in January, because they understood from Ted Sarnes you wanted to announce, but I, 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 they were going to put two more schools out, and they've announced six, but for instance, Fort McClellan, they're going to erect a school for, well, no, here's one, Fort Rucker, at Jan uh, grades one to six, 892 on-base children, a total of 14 Negro children, and the estimated cost is $742,000. Just because of the 14? Yeah. Fort Stewart's 23 children. It's $297,000. Yeah. Robbins Air Force Base is eight Negro children, $594,000. Fort Jackson, 18 children, $234,000. Fort Myrtle, Jackson, where? Where's Fort, Fort Jackson? Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Myrtle Beach Air Force. What is your suggestion? Well, and then they're going to put two more, so it's eight. It's going to cost about $3 million bucks. We've got a court case, you see, at the present time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, which probably won't be resolved for another year, or a year and a, or maybe two years before it perhaps goes to the Supreme Court, which will resolve all of these matters. What they will do by spending for these eight places, they'll uh, spend about $3 million, and, um, and uh, they'll uh, get maybe an extra year for about uh, 50 or 60 children yeah. in uh, Negro children. Well, they've been going all this long period of time. Uh, it just seems like a hell of a lot of money. Now, uh, um, well, the problem is a political problem, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, having made the announcement. Yeah. Because, you know, it was Ray Will Roy Wilkins criticized the way H.E.W. Yeah. did it. Well, now, can, I, uh, can, can we see what... Uh, what we should have done is just left it with the right. legal case. I don't that's know how right. we got beyond that. Well, that's, that's a, it was a mistake, yeah. which was made the end of January. Yeah. But I've told them over there, to make sure we have coordination on these damn things. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, can uh, we, we leave it to the, if, if you don't have any strong feeling about well, it? I want to talk to Ted Sorensen because he's been working on it. All right. Let's really find out because he may know some of the problems that I don't know on it. Well, I, what I'd like to do is to see if I could work something out, and uh, which will be satisfactory to everybody. Maybe it's not possible, but uh, they... Uh, or maybe... Uh, yeah. uh, Celebrese thought that you had been personally interested, so I want to... No, I'm not. I don't care. It's just really a question of trying to deal with a political problem. Well, whatever we do, we'll talk to Ted first. Okay, fine. I'll talk to him. Right. Lee Levenger, yeah. the antitrust division. Yeah. And we talked about putting him over in the FCC as a yeah. member. Yeah. And then uh, maybe bringing Bill Orrick back and making him head of the antitrust division. Okay. Is that all right? Fine. There's a vacancy, is there? In the FCC. You mean when, uh, when our when friend Newt leaves? Uh, yeah. I see. Yeah. I don't know exactly. Do you know when, you know when Newt Mill's going to leave? In other words, you're ready to go any time. I'll just yeah. find, I'll have Kenny find out when Newt's going to leave. Right. Okay. Now, wait, hello. Then we'll go ahead with Henry as the chairman. Yeah. Right. Uh, and one other thing. Uh, I've had some conversations the last couple of weeks with a fellow by the name of Mundelein, who's yeah. from Mozambique. Yeah. And he's the fellow that's leading the efforts to uh, make Mozambique independent. He's a terrifically impressive fellow. Yeah. And um, That's Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he... Uh, uh, his, some of his people have gotten, he's the head of it, but some of his people have gotten some aid and assistance from Czechoslovakia and Poland. He needs help from the United States for two reasons. Number one, so that he can indicate to them that, uh, that there are people in the West, at least, that are sympathetic to his efforts. And uh, number two, just to keep him going. Uh, the figure that he's mentioned that he'll need for a year is, uh, uh, is quite reasonable. First, he needs $50,000 for his own operation. And then he needs uh, $50,000 for uh, to help with the refugee. Uh, I think that it's a possibility that they can get the second $50,000 from the Ford Foundation, at least they're working on that. Carl Kazan is. Uh, but he'd need at least $50,000 from us. Now, uh, Dean Rusk has felt that, uh, that he wants to be able to sit down with the Portuguese and say none of these people are getting any money. Uh, if he turned this over to somebody like Abel Harriman or John McCone just to use their own judgment, uh, and then he wouldn't have to get involved yeah. in it or know anything about it. Uh, I think it would be damn helpful. Now, we've had discussions on these things for the last week, and Carl Kazin can fill you in on it. But this fellow's going back Wednesday, Monday, and he's going to meet with the heads of all these African nations at this meeting, I guess, next week. We wouldn't want him to be saying he got anything from No, but you wouldn't have that, you see. You'd have it through some private foundation. Yeah. They could have cutouts on I it, see. and John McCone can handle it, so it wouldn't come from the 
Eight. Well, now, what does it depend on? Uh, you think we ought to give it? Yes. Okay, well, then what do we do to give well, it? Well, maybe if you talk to Carl Kazin about how it should be handled, because it should be handled so that Dean Rusk is happy and... And uh, right Abel Harriman feels very strongly it should be given. Okay. But uh, I think if it could be handled so that uh, maybe you could explain to Dean Rusk, he doesn't have to know about it directly. Should we tell Dean Rusk? Well, um, you, I, Carl Kazin's got all the facts on it, and he'll okay. have a suggestion as to how it should be handled. Now, uh, uh, do you know what time those troops got there, according to my yeah. information? Isn't that terrible? 11.19? Yeah. And Which, not all of them. Not all of them? Well, uh, he, told that, he told me, uh, uh, Nick said that five planes were still in the air at 11.30. Well, when I called them at 1, they said the first units got there at 11.19. But, uh, uh, but, I mean, how? and I got notes here, which says it was going to get there at 7.30. Yeah, that's terrible. And the fellow, and then, we, and then saying that they were in the air at the time I talked to them. I don't know how you could screw it up like that. Well, well I thought I'd write a memorandum to McNamara about it and ask what time and everything and then say... Did they get in when they said they were going to, etc.? Because if they have it happen this time, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shot. I'm going to write a memo. On. Okay. Are there any Arkansas God people? Uh, there were more than Alabamians, and I would guess there were Arkansas, but not in not in casualties. No, but I mean, none of them. Uh, no Arkansas people were. Killed with it. No, not that I know of. I'm pretty well, sure yeah, not. But only four were killed. That's right, and they were all Alabamas. I understand well, it. Let's check it out. Well, I'd like to find out about when these Arkansas people were recruited, whether right. it was before, and they didn't fly any combat missions, as I, or did they? Have you got any information? Let's find out. I don't know. Is somebody looking that up? Yeah, I'll check it. Can you call me right back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. the, um, nobody from Arkansas flew in combat. There were 24 from yeah. Arkansas. Yeah. Did they fly that day? Were they any in the plane? None flew in combat over the Bay of Pigs. They were not, in other words, sent on those missions. Oh, who most of those were other fellows? But all the four that were killed were Alabama. I knew that all the four that were killed, yeah. but there were some other Americans. There were. There? There, was, there were some others, and I'm trying to find out what states. But so far, all they've reported is negative on Arkansas. They're sure of that? Well, that Dick Helm says he's sure. I see. And what about... Uh, uh, you don't know when they were recruited, do you? Um, I've got, I've got to look up that memo. Now, the question is whether... He says nobody from Arkansas flew into combat. Uh, we're just thinking maybe I'll get the Defense Department to say that. Or the agency, or... Well, the agency has been reluctant. Yeah, I know they have. But, I mean, Forbes is saying that I left Arkansas boys to die. Recruited in the net were recruited, but left hanged by the administration of Kennedy. That doesn't beat him nothing. Well, okay, I'll talk to Dick Helms. Let me just so I'm right. sure. Okay. Right. He says that Helms at the CIA place. Yes, Mr. President. Yeah. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, absolutely not, sir. Yeah. I've just verified and re-verified that. Yeah. That's absolutely certain. Why well, were they down in Nicaragua? Or so they were in Guatemala. Yeah. And there were eight of them who were uh, officers, in other words, pilots, navigators, planners. Yeah. were involved in training the Cubans. The other 16 were involved in crown crews, mechanics and things of that kind. I see. How come they were recruited in the South and not the North? I noticed Forbes said they couldn't recruit in the North. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. There is a matter. I think that was pure happenstance. Yeah. The uh, states that were represented were Georgia. There was one from California. There were several from Washington, D.C., and then there was Alabama and Arkansas. Oh, I see. Now, these were recruited from? All from National Guard units. I see. And Eight. they totaled 124. Recruitment. 124? Yeah. They recruited. Okay. And then yeah. we had some others that were, yeah. uh, some pilots from CAT that were rotated in and out and so forth. Okay. Good. Fine. Thank you. You bet. Oh, hello, Larry. Yes. Hey, tell me, uh, Mac here says that he hears that Armistead Selden is going to have a report on what we're doing to stop subversion in Latin America, and it's going to be rather critical. Now, we are working on this, and we've got the control group, and we've got a program which we're presenting. Uh, as always, it takes a little longer than yeah. it seems to, but I wondered if we could, I guess the cell is on this committee. I yeah. thought we ought to try to mute the criticism. Uh, I think if they would suggest a program, they don't need to skin us on it. We well, if Selden has a degree of control there, he has talked to uh, Wilson and I last week along these lines and uh, gave us a uh, well, uh, I would have to say almost total assurance, and we're certainly in a position to review with him what he's going to do if Mac wants to uh, provide me with some thoughts that, uh, as to a 
a line. Uh, hell, I, I think we can work it out. Well, I think if you could, uh, would be available to tell them what we're yeah. trying to do, or if we All could right. answer any questions and give them any material we've got on our program, which he could put forward as a cell right. program, and, and urge us to carry out these actions, just not to be awfully harsh about our not doing it, because it's really up to these other countries. Yeah. Like Mexico and the rest of them. Oh, well, uh, I'll get moving on that, and uh, I'll probably get... You didn't get, get my, my hat? Yes, I've talked to him, What'd and he say? was going to talk to He hadn't even heard of it. Yeah. He said that uh, there was nothing in the, the early editions down there, so I reviewed it with him. He said he just couldn't understand the damn thing at all, other than uh, that Favre's been having legislative trouble down there this year for no good reason, because he hasn't much of a program, but he says he's been holding on to his gut. He's got stomach trouble anyway and been grousing pretty well. He spent the, the day before yesterday with him, didn't hear a word about this sort of thing. Would get to him as fast as he could. He thought it would be this afternoon be back to me. Yeah, uh, you told him there were no Arkansas. Yeah, him. I went over the whole thing with him and right. he said, I'll grab him and I'll get back to you the minute okay. I talk to him. All right. Well, uh, you heard about that? happens at uh, one, one minute ago, uh, uh, Mr. Jerry Siegel of the Washington Post uh, called, and uh, he's just this instant come into my office with something that he said he was to bring me from Phil. All right. Now, uh, well, why don't you read it, if you would, and then perhaps you and I should talk as the real, it's murderous. What the, what the well, he's going to really cause us an endless grief with this one. If they print it, and then he wants to print it for Friday. Now, the question really is how we try to prevent it from carrying, because it's really what he's doing is this is really a, an attack on, well, I don't know what it is, but it certainly is it be a hell of a headache for me, which may be part of his mixed-up purpose, but uh, and very bad for the corporation and the directors and everybody. Would you read it and call me back? Yes, sir. Okay. Hold, hold just a second. Yeah. Um, now, now, did uh, Jerry, did Phil say for you to bring this to me, and then I was to read it, and then, and then what, and, that I would know what to do? Oh. oh. What, did he indicate in any way that after I read it, I was to get in touch with him, with Bill? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, when, when, oh, when, when did you take it to Duncan? Just, oh, I see. Well, all right. Um, did they say that he has decided to print it or that he's susceptible to reasoning on it? Oh, he, he, oh I tried. Now, Mr. Siegel is saying that Phil, uh, as of the last word that they had from him, still seems determined to, to want to publish this yeah. before the hearings start, which and they start on Monday. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, let me read it and let me talk to Mr. Siegel and then I'll have to, and then I'll be back right. in touch with you. Okay, fine. All right, Mr. Right President. Fine. Uh, Hello. Hello. Nick, what do you think of the uh, bomb Graham? <laughs> uh, not very much. Uh, yeah. uh, the uh, the problems that he raises and discusses in there are all problems that. Uh, uh, were thought of and discussed at length before we went ahead with this corporation. Yeah. Every one of them is anticipated or in the statute itself. Uh, and uh, what he fears coming to pass could only come to pass if nobody uh, did their job, nobody in the government did their job. Yeah. Yeah. That's the short answer to it. And uh, that can be... Uh, I wonder if we would have been better off with a government corporation. I uh, think the one way of making sure that AT&T ran that would have been to have a government corporation. Yeah, they were. Because you'd have then had uh, the one... Uh, the one At least piece, high, you would have had a... We had 70% of the use would have been on contract to AT&T. Yeah. And they just would have never had to invest. Well, I think uh, we ought to... I tell you what, Graham is now... I mean, uh, uh, clock slip is reading it. I think we ought to get up an answer which Pastore might make or which somebody else might make that would sort of respond to these points so we'll have it available in case because I understand now he wants to print it Friday. Yeah, I hope he does. For, well, him, for his sake, I really hope he does. Well, I think it would be harmful for everybody because yeah. the hearings begin Monday now. The only thing he does is his final suggestion is it's awful weak. He goes in like a lion, comes out like a lamb. The final suggestion is 
that we just we have six directors who are full time. I mean, that's hardly a very adequate reform, and that's always suggesting, isn't it? Yeah. You know, of course, what I've wanted and all along, what we've been pushing on, is to get management because the directors shouldn't be doing this, Mr. Yeah, President. Yeah. This is the job of management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got Charrick. We got two now, and they're going to get some some more. I hope very yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where the six men he's talking about, the directors, don't go around to this kind of thing. This is the management job. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to get up some sort of an answer which Pastore could make, if yeah. necessary, uh, to him that we could print at the same time that this is printed? Yeah. He'd be the best fellow, I think, to do it. All right, we'll do that. Good. This, this would be printed what Friday. So if it is, well. we're going to try to kill it, but yeah. it, I'm just thinking if we fail. It doesn't have to be voluminous, but it would be. And then I suppose we would have to brief our directors before they go up there for confirmation so that uh, if this is going to be printed, we'd probably have to have a meeting with them, which you and... Ted Sorensen and so on, we could go over some of these points which would be made by the committee if, if Graham's charges are made that would be could be answered, particularly Charrick and uh, Ben. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. We'll All right. do that. Thanks. Okay. Hello? How are you? Good. Uh, you got a statement you might make tomorrow in connection with unemployment? Just about just about the reason it has gone up by th uh, three tenths of a percent. Well, the uh, largest factors in it are a substantial increase in the workforce beyond. Uh, Why would that normal. be in the winter? We're uh, trying to figure out what it is. As nearly as we can figure it, most of the, the largest increase uh, is uh, in connection with applications for part time employment. Now, these are two figures that jump around pretty badly. Yeah. And uh, the increase in the workforce is 700,000. Uh, most of which is... How long a period? Oh, in one month. My God. Now, most of that is seasonal. It, it always jumps between uh, January and February, uh, but uh, it's about 200,000 too high. Uh, the part-time uh, employment requests make up about half of this. Teenagers make up about half of it. Yeah. Uh, these, uh, But all I'm saying to you is that these are three. This, the workforce yeah. figure, the part-time figure, and the teenagers are all three of them figures that jump around from month to month. Yeah, so we but, get it. Uh, but uh, it's hard to bite in anything more than that. And well, uh, you're going to say something about our programs? To tie, tie it in with the tax program, the youth unemployment thing. Yeah, what else? Youth unemployment, tax, what else is that? Uh, uh, education, I would think, I think. Uh, let's see. We'll, cool. we'll try to work in a tie-in on that. Uh, I gather we don't see anything yet about accelerated public works. Is that right? Well, I think we accelerated public works. I think we've got our weight on that. I think that's right. You know, and then we added another month. What? Is not, that vocational? Oh, well, you can. You know the stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure. I see the tie-in on education. Gotcha. I'll see. But well, the only thing I was thinking of about the uh, skills. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, permanent and the unemployment thing we've got to tie it in with too. Yeah, maybe not education. I think that's a little hard. All right. Okay. Okay. Fine. We'll do. We'll check it over okay. there. Okay. Right there. Okay. Right there. Boston is, is a pretty good little issue. Yeah. Uh, can't we do something about that? Yeah. Well, actually, this whole damn thing is uh, up in the air now. Guys like Muskie and others. Uh, guys, by the time I put together all the inquiries we've had today, I think it'll probably cover the whole waterfront. We'll just have to review this entire operation. I'm going to... They didn't put clear it. this at all, did no. they? No. Well, they, it was a rather, very frankly, it was just a stupid operation all the way. I've got Mahaffey on the other line, incidentally, yeah. who has just come from the governor. Yeah. And, of course, he said the governor, it's the old story that he never said it would get you in 64, and reporters have called him all, all over the country, and he has denied he has said that. Yeah. That uh, he uh, still insists that Arkansas Flyers participated in the invasion, however. Yeah, well, you tell them what they did is they participated in the training down there in Nicaragua, yeah. Guatemala, but they didn't fly in combat. Yeah, that's uh, what I had told him uh, initially. That's what he told the governor. And the governor said, well, hell, he wasn't quarreling. He said, uh, uh, he, the governor's going to call me later tonight. Uh, but he said, hell, I, uh, I not, don't want to get in any... Well, uh, why don't you just tell them that what we want to do is just put the goddamn thing to rest. Right. So whatever they can do down there to just shut it all up is fine with us. That the gods issued some statement about it. He can uh, just say that they were... Uh, he can do, try to cover his tracks and we'll try to end it. Yeah, all right. Okay. right. And then we ought to get this thing straight. Now, I don't want it around that we're taking business out of Scranton, out to, which is depressed up to. So I think we ought to put out a statement saying that uh, we're holding up, or the Secretary of the Treasury ought to put it out in the morning, we're holding up all these transfers. All right. Because I just think it's stupid. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Oh. Hello, Mr. Yeah. Fowler on the line, Miss Lincoln. Okay. Hello. Hello, sir. 
Oh, Jeff. Listen, uh, this is a goddamn thing of Kaplan's is causing us a lot of headaches. I'm, I'm just uh, rubbing my head from all over the place, yes. What I is, uh, how can they be that dumb over there? Will you tell me that? I mean, Christ, to take something out of Scranton and put it in Boston, which is a depressed area, just making it easy for the governor down there and everybody in Pennsylvania to say we're taking care of Teddy. I mean, uh, are they out of their minds? What, save a million dollars four years from now? Well, uh... He doesn't have any goddamn sense. He may be a genius, but he doesn't have any sense. Uh, we're, uh, we're, uh... Eating it? Uh, got, we, uh, the, the real question, I think, is whether... I, uh, my own suggestion, sir, would be this, that we get him to answer this tomorrow. Let's see how much, uh, follow-up there is from, uh, from fellows like Cotton and, uh, Rockefeller. And let's see if this is a 24-hour wonder and whether it passes off. Uh, Scranton is the one that really bothers me more than New York. Because, you know, they've got such a bad unemployment situation. Well, there. it's it's a, it's a very minuscule number. I'm getting him to, I've had him on the phone for the last hour, uh, getting me every fact I can get my hands Was on. Was he aware that this would have a bad repercussion, or did he think everybody's oh, going to... Oh, yes. Uh, we, we, we went into this in great detail about what the consequences would be, and I had him go up and see everybody and... God's name about it. I wish he'd talk to O'Brien. Did he talk to O'Brien? I don't know whether he talked to O'Brien or not. Well, you tell him in the future to talk to O'Brien. Christ, I'm the one who gets all the hell in these things. Kaplan doesn't. So I, uh, the only problem, uh, so make sure then, then at least we get responsibility if it goes wrong. Now, I think that uh, we ought to consider tomorrow issuing a statement saying that, uh, uh, by the secretary, in which he says, or Kaplan, that this matter is going to be... Uh, reviewed and there'll, be, and there'll be no action will be taken until the review is complete then you could put it to rest for a couple of weeks and then we could eat it if we had to well uh there is of course this line to take let me just cite you the new york situation just yeah. to take one yeah. actually there there are 776 people in that new york office 602 of them are going to be retained 174 are marked as surplus no taxpayer services are being transferred and then, of course, this is all part of a program for economy and efficiency. Now, that's a general line of answer that would be given to Rockefeller to his telegram to you. Yeah. Uh, question of whether we get out a press release on, on that uh, or whether... I don't care so much about Rockefeller. He's always yelling about economy and efficiency. That's right. We could, we could but, of course, the in. unfortunate thing is they're moving it to Massachusetts. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm more concerned a little about Scranton. That's got about, about 170 people. Uh, no, I think it'll turn out to be uh, just about, maybe less than that. I don't have the Scranton figures. I've asked. Well, would you consider, uh, in any case, then, that the, uh, an announcement? Uh, what you and I talk about it tomorrow. But this I, is what I, I would we might have: either Kaplan or the secretary say that this matter is going to be reviewed. There'll be no changes made until the review is completed, and uh, then that would uh, that might then we could always eat it if we had to. But let's consider that in the morning. All right, I don't sir. want to have a lot of people in Pennsylvania think we're screwing them for Teddy. Yeah, well, they they, they couldn't uh, really on on the on. No, the but you know how these emotional matters get going. They go. To, they, it goes to Philadelphia Listen. and to Pittsburgh. The people from Scranton. They go to Pennsylvania. They stay in Pennsylvania. They stay in Pennsylvania. Uh, so uh, and they're just a few, uh, not and uh, they we keep an office there. Yeah. And uh, actually, I think that when I get the facts in hand... Well, get the facts on Scranton. That's uh, the one that disturbs me We most. can deal with that one. Detroit, we're going to take care of anyway, because we've got a commitment on that. Uh, but uh, I'll talk to you then tomorrow. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, I'm on top of this just as fast as I can, have okay. been for the last hour or two yeah. when it hit me. I, I've been buried in the tax bill, so uh, right. yeah, okay. I, I just wasn't on top of it. Right on. Right on. Right on. Hello. Hello, George. How are you? Did you have a? We've got some information, you know, that Jock's visit has been canceled to the United States by De Gaulle. That he didn't want him coming around here. A French minister would be misunderstood. That lends a special interest again to Adlai's trip. Have we ever found out what the genesis of that was? Yes, I, I spoke to him yesterday. He's coming down uh, tomorrow. I was to be here Friday. What yeah. he said was this: that he's going over to a NATO war college as a. Uh, yeah. session and he had been asked to go over and, and give a speech and uh, he had simply mentioned to uh, the uh, French uh, delegate in, at the UN in New York that he was going to do this and this fellow had said well I hope you'll go see uh, Kuhn while you're there and uh, uh, Stevenson said well I uh, I don't have any particular business to do and he said well I think he'd like to see you and so uh, uh, 
this fellow went back to Paris, and apparently he arranged the meeting with Coup, but I don't get, didn't get the sense from Adley that there has been anything firm arranged with the general. Oh, I see. Okay, fine. So this fellow had simply said that... Uh, well, as long as we keep it on that basis, that's yeah. fine. He's Just... going to be down on Friday, and I yeah. think he can, we can either have him... When does he go? When does he go? Uh, it's the end of the month. Right. But, uh, okay. A couple of weeks from now, anyway. Good. Okay. Thanks, right. George. Thank you, George. Well, you see that the Pentagon also pointed out that Defense Secretary Robinson said in the news conference that there were no U.S. military personnel operating in the invasion. That's the point that I didn't want to make, is if they make that generalization, then it looks like the distinction between a guardsman and not a guardsman is the key thing. Right. I thought we went into that. We did, and he, when I heard the statement, it was flatly that no Arkansas National Guardsmen were there. The fact of the matter is that former U.S. guardsmen, military guardsmen from Alabama, were in combat right. operations. So what's the sense in pointing... Then that looks like there's some tricky distinction here. Right. I thought I'd made that point you, to him. You did, and uh, this General Wilson didn't put out anything but what you said. I, I, they read it to me over Will the phone. Somebody asked him what they mean by saying that about McNamara, no U.S. military personnel, because the fact of the matter is, we know that. Nobody has said that. They're talking about former guardsmen. Right. I thought I, I, but, I mean, the point is, General, I told you that, but I didn't want these two things joined together, because one then looks like the key word is guardsmen. Right. And uh, that's, uh, Sylvester had it absolutely clear, and he put it out clear. But I'll check up and see what McNamara did. Well, no, McNamara didn't put out anything. It says the Pentagon is the same thing. Well, I'll check on I'd like it. to find out why they included that statement. Because how does that, then what does that mean that the, what do you call the Alabama group? Right. They're not U.S. military personnel, but then it then looks like uh, what we're doing is separating guardsmen from other people. And the fact of the matter, nobody did it. Nobody did it. Nobody I told them. Well, they had it straight when I, they All called right, let's me. let's find out about it. I'll check on it right away. Find out about it. I'll check on it. Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, how'd you, you read Mr. Dodds? Uh, yes, I did. What'd you think of it? Well, I, it, it, it's a temperate and about as good a presentation to that point of view as you can get. I'm debating whether I should answer it again. Why don't you get another one ready and let me look at it? All right, I think fine. you might point out, two or three, one point is that if we'd gotten an agreement four years ago, you wouldn't have been. Perhaps had these tests. I think that's right. If and, we had uh, an agreement four years ago, we'd been a lot better off. If we had not been, if we'd been able, because uh, the fact of the matter is, it isn't. Uh, we tested. Uh, he gives the impression in that letter that it's the Soviet testing. It's closed to, uh, as if we didn't test. Yes. The fact of the matter is that we were ahead. The more they test, the more we test. Even if we each ran 100 tests, we tend to equalize. We tend to equalize, and so that will be with anyone else who begins to develop. They'll start way behind, and if each country continues to test, because you can't make those kind of extraordinary advances you made at the beginning. And the fact of the matter is, if we'd gotten the agreement back in '59, or whenever it was we started, if it had, if it had prevented this large series of tests, we would have been better off. The second thing is. That neutron bomb, he's a nut on the neutron bomb. Two years ago, I think he was making some speeches about it. It was right around the corner, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. fact of the matter is, I don't see the neutron bomb as making any specific difference. Uh, neither do I. And uh, I've got to write, I think, uh, I've got to right tone this script with you, Mr. President, that, that arguing with Tom Dodd is better than arguing with a Republican on this. It just so happens that Dodd and I have friends. Yeah. And Why I is it better? I'm not... Cordial note. Yeah, all right. Well, let's see what you get. I'll get it over to you. And then let me look at it. Right, okay. 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 Hello? Oh, Mr. President, yeah. there's a piece in the word of, yeah. a piece in the word of a supposed interview with this fellow, Frederick Earl, who's the president of the Board of Yeah, Texas. I saw that. Uh, yeah. I wanted you to understand that as far as the department was concerned, we hit him very, very hard, and he had no basis for saying he got any sympathy. He said not only on the Willens, but the other thing is that we understood we were sympathetic about his trade well, with the Soviet. I mean, no, yeah. on, on the Soviet trade. Yeah. Uh, I talked to him myself, and we've never been rougher with anybody, so I've gotten getting to David Ormsby Gorian, and we're going to have him send the message to London that if Errol hadn't got any such idea, he's, uh, he's completely mistaken. That this is a matter we feel deeply and strongly about, and it's going to cause great trouble here. Is this on the pipe or just generally? On the pipe. Uh, on Did the he bring ship. up the pipe? Well, I brought up the pipe, I brought up the ship for oil deal, and I brought up the sale of the Viscounts, all three. Yeah. And we hit him very hard. I told him that on the pipe that uh, they weren't going to get anything out of the pipe, but they were going to break the line, and the Germans were going to get the orders. But it would be very hard to to uh, enforce anything under uh, uh, on the Western embargo after this, and that uh, uh, furthermore, the uh, this was something that was really hurting the Soviet Union, as it made clear to us. And that if they went ahead with this, I foresaw very great problems in this country on 
cooperation in a lot of other things. And on the ship for oil deal, if this was the beginning of Soviet penetration, oil penetration, it was going to cause trouble in the Middle East, going to cause great trouble here, and so on. Yeah. So that there was no doubt that he got the point, and this is a this is kind of rather a crude play on his part to, yeah. Yeah. to try to put yeah. us in this position. Yeah. So when the secretary has his press conference tomorrow, well, we're going to cook up a question and let him hit it hard there too. Right, right. So that there'll be no doubt back in London as to what the. I thought Walter Lippmann had a good article this morning. Well, I think that's useful to begin yeah. to, to get this out. He he the, uh, he misconstrued a little what uh, what Holstein was saying, but. I think the more we create the impression of concern here on this, whether the stronger opposition will be, so it doesn't just right. doesn't worry me about it. Okay, that's right. fine, John. Thank you. Hello? Hello, oh, Mr. President. How are you? How are you? Very good. Fine. Fine. Yes. I just had some sad news. Tom Shanahan in New York passed away this morning. Oh, did he? Did he? Yes. You know, he was in an automobile accident. I didn't know that. Yes. About two weeks ago, he went right through the uh, windshield, and he had an awful time. He really had a purgatory here on that did he last two weeks. He was, he, was he unconscious? Well, no, he was conscious all along, uh, just towards the end, I guess. Uh, first, it was his leg, and he was on the operating table about... 8.30 to 10.30 at night, and uh, they, they thought they'd lose his leg, and then his ribs were all crushed, and then uh, he, uh, then his kidneys got involved, so I guess that's what killed him. But, uh, he was a really good friend of yours from way back. Well, is his wife, he's got a widow? Yes, and children. I didn't know he was even sick, or I would have sent him something. I tell, well, I'll send her. Would you, let me put you, uh, you on to some girl. Would yeah. you give him where I can send something, a message? Wait just a second. Yes, all right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Bill. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Shanahan. Uh, that's Thomas Shanahan. Mrs. Thomas Shanahan. Uh-huh. And it's at uh, uh, the 100... Uh, I don't have the exact address of the uh, beach. 143rd uh, Street, uh, 142nd Street, Beach 142nd, that's the E-A-C-H, 142nd Street, uh, in the Pont, uh, Bell Harbor, 94, New York. And his wife's name is Anne, A-N-N-E, I guess. Okay. And, and they have children, they have a uh, I was down San Francisco, Philadelphia, Brooklyn, and Boston. Well, uh, I'm with you all the way. We have no uh, results of this thing. This thing is yeah, but make sure that it's... Uh, <laughs> to, 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 let me know before anything begins to even surface on that thing, those, Very definitely, those because those places are our uh, home. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some rumor that they're even going to think about shutting down uh, uh, Treasure Island, Yeah. which is just like drilling a hole through me. Yeah, well, I understand that, but you'd be... I wouldn't close down anything in San Francisco, Philadelphia, New York, or Boston. All right. Because we might just as well go home ourselves then. As long right. as you like it down here, you better not close down those any of those yards. All right. I will. Uh, I'll stay right on that. I know exactly where I got it from. Okay. Listen, one other thing I wanted to uh, bring up that San Francisco, as far as the uh, convention, yeah. will meet any price of any city in the country. They've got a you know a t hotel tax fund out there which has over a million dollars in it. Yeah. So they'll come in with a proposal of 700000 Okay, 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 I'll check it. I'll let Bailey know that. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. 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 Well, there's one part that I think is good, which is yeah. the, the amount of uh, what, uh, what our situation was in the 30s in regard to farms being lit and all the rest. Right. And then to show what progress we've made in the last... Uh, all right. Years. It, uh, I think that's the good part of the speech. All the right. rest of it you may have some other thoughts about. All right, fine. Then uh, I have to make an opening statement, I guess, too, don't I? Yeah, you've got two others. You've got uh, one at the airport uh, when you come in, in the helicopter and meet all the other presidents. Then yeah. you've got your opening remarks at the conference, which every president will make about a 10-minute uh, little talk. Those are the only other ones of any consequence. And then okay. some well, off-the-cuff remarks that uh, oh, we'll prepare a sheet or two, you know. On you've the got, uh, well, you're getting some stuff together, right? That's right. I'm okay. getting it all together now. Okay, fine. Fine, Thank good. You. 
the way you stood up there and took an oath and all the rest made me proud. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought you looked terrific, and I thought it was very good, and I thought you did a terrific job on that TFX. Well... It's very good. I'm really working on that now. Yeah. We're, we're going to hit hit him hard tomorrow with a statement that uh, will be read, and then Bob will be cross-examined on it next week. But I think we can regain the initiative. Well, when you think that, uh, as you pointed out, that both the planes were satisfactory, it isn't as if, you know, in the way they've been handling that thing. Yeah. But if they'd only done that on the stockpile, we could have really, when you think that that case, never, we never got that thing off the ground in a no. year, and they made the TFX, you know, when there hasn't been any uh, scandal. But anyway, I thought it was very good. Thanks very much, Mr. Bye, Ron. Okay. Construction will add a billion dollars to the budget. The pay raise will be almost automatic. Construction, you have to have appropriation for, so maybe we'll be back with our budget figure. But it does, there's two things. First, it's, as a practical matter, it does raise our budget. Yeah. Secondly, it's not a bad point to make. I think it takes a lot of the guts out of the attacks on us. Yeah. If we could make the point that the House of Representatives in one week went a billion dollars over the president's budget, it, uh, it seems to me it's pretty important for us politically. In, uh, indicating that we, after all, set up a pretty hard budget. Maybe we're not the ones who are the great spenders, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I gather the reluctance of the uh, the reluctance of the leadership in this instance, to some degree, is that there's unanimity in this area. You know that'll yeah, be well, the problem we'll be faced with. Well, you'll have a voice vote. We don't want yeah. a roll call, but I yeah. we're, what we're wondering is whether uh, Kermit Gordon would write a letter of the budget indicating that this what these this will cost. Yeah. And uh, indicating that it also will cost about sixty or seventy million dollars in our gold flow. Right. Now if he wrote the letter gratuitously, that's rather hard or had a statement. The other way would be if a congressman wrote and asked him. Yeah. Now uh, why don't I'd I just like to have the point made because it's well I don't want to have a fight with Vincent. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a goddamn good point. It is a it is a damn good point, and uh, I uh, know that uh, Boggs, for one at least, is uh, perfectly willing to make the point on the floor, and I'm sure he can do it in a way that wouldn't get us into a jam up with Benson. But it it uh, I think this is worthwhile. And actually, I think there would be some real mileage in this in the press if they catch it. Well, now there's two issues you really have to put them together. Isn't the other one the uh, construction bill that will come up Thursday supposedly? Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, we ought to, maybe we could oppose that better than we could the pay raise. Mm -hmm. That uh, Kermit Gordon could then let it say that the, what you did in the House, $691 million plus this, well, it adds a, a billion, and we just feel that this is, a, you know, makes our budget problem more difficult, etc. Yeah. So it's a question whether he writes it on the pay raise or waits and does it Thursday on this other matter or whether he puts the two together or what he does. Would you think about it? Yeah, all right. Uh, the, I can see your point on the pay raise. That's a little touchy, not only in the same area as we have the other one, but also in the area of uh, reaction of the military and their families, of course. Well, well the Budget Bureau is not uh, yeah. me and it's not yeah. McNamara. Right. It looks just like it's discussing what the... I mean, uh, they'll pass it, but it will... Yeah. It will... Uh, it's a valid point. Why don't you let me think okay. about the procedure on it? Okay. All right. How'd you do? Well, I don't think they're very happy and I have to make you personal friends, but I think we lost up the record and used up a half a day to get Bob a half a day chance to get more ready. Yeah. Uh, but uh, would they eat on you? Oh, they, 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 were, they were pretty mad about everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mean they just like to give it, you know, they never like to take it up Well, there. they kind of got it. And, uh, and, uh, our, I know my cop was a guest. He said, oh, God, you didn't make any friends. They'll kill you. And I said, well. Who said this? Oh. Jack Stemper, who was there from our, law, our legal office. Yeah. This was after you finished? Yeah, after finished. They had me there, and then we got all through. They said, well, why didn't you apologize? We wouldn't be here for two hours. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> any comment. I, I said, thought you did, and you let us. That's what I told them. What did they say? Well, well, then they, then they, I don't know what they wanted after that. I point, and then they didn't like it because I said that I thought that the full picture hadn't come out, and the way it's coming out, and the Defense Department. Uh, view of this whole thing, which was a matter of high uh, defense policy, it was came out in a way that the public got a distorted view. Well, that started them off. I was making a record, and that's what making them wild, of course. Yeah, yeah. I got when do they release your record? Right away, it's being released. Oh, is it? Uh, uh, I read to them the story out of the Chicago Daily News by Jim McCartney, whom yeah. I talked to this morning, which began by saying that some investigators have made up their mind that this is a bad contract. Yeah. And then a quotation from an investigator who said, quote... Yeah, about the plane. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. Well, I didn't like that. I kept reading that as many times as I could. What'd they say then? <laughs> they deny they said that? 
Well, they didn't even ask. Or they wouldn't ask, you know. Was Jackson like, there? With who? All the, every one of them was there. They were all there. And Scoop, what's he, how's he defending his? Oh, he was, you know, he was bolting the hell out of me, saying I'd made many mistakes, and I, I, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then Munt finally said to me, well, you've been quoted as saying that you don't believe in telling the truth, but this affect your testimony. And then I said, Senator, this is an insulting remark on your part. I have taken a note. And I, well, he backed way away from it then. Yeah. You know, they were trying to give me the work there. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite an enjoyable day. Yeah. The record will be thoroughly confused, but we'll have a lot of things on the record that these guys will pick up, and that's what's bothering them, really. Yeah, yeah. When does Bob go up there? I have not been back this morning. This How was McClellan? Uh, he got pretty mad when I kept reading the Chicago Daily News thing. I didn't yeah. read it once. I think I read it four times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Okay, good. Fine. Okay. Right out. Yeah, yeah. I just want to put in your uh, back of your mind for a day or two before I can talk it over with you on the need for some very discreet but uh, and contingency planning on the uh, Pope's serious illness. Yes, well, I noticed we were just talking about it right now because evidently some stories put out about the uh, inform about Vatican sources that my trip had been suspended on yes. my visit to the Vatican. Well, we have we have that particular point, and we also then in the event of a funeral. We must think who leads the delegation. Foster Dulles led the one before. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think it would uh, need to be either the vice president or myself. Right. Uh, but then the other members of the delegation, a uh, matter of really great importance, and uh, you would probably want to have one of your immediate staff uh, concentrate on this with us for a little careful contingency planning. Right, right. Uh, you might be thinking about who you want to have and uh, which, uh, which of us you, you, you think might be better to go. Right, uh, right. I can see some advantages either way, but uh, I'll have a chance to talk to you about well, it. Maybe they both go. Or now on the on the uh, on the trip, I would. Uh, I don't know where that story came from, but it came. It said Vatican sources said our visit had been suspended. Uh huh. Well, uh, I, I think it's think? probably. Uh, what does it say? It looks, Here it is. It looks to me as though it's, uh, your visit is not likely to take place, but that's just a, that's just a, as far as that, uh, the Pope is concerned. The yeah, pre plan for President Kennedy's audience with Pope John have been suspended because of the Pontiff's illness. Right. Well, now, that uh, plans to be pending clarification. I don't know whether we have no other information about his health except the newspaper reports, have we? Right. I, I, no, I don't think so. Well, uh, if, of course, it just depends uh, if, if he should, something should happen. It seems to me that what I would do would be if something happened to him before I'm going, they will have picked a new pope. Right. If uh, something well, the, the, the selection might not occur that quick. Well, then I would think what I'd do is just put my Italian visit at the end of my Irish visit. Right. And right. just go with the, do it that way. Right. Right. Well, um, all right. Well, we'll we'll. Uh, I think Bill Tyler will work with me personally on this okay. whole business so that uh, no one else will be involved with it. Okay. And is Kenny O'Donnell maybe the fellow you want to work on it? Well, fine. Good. Right. Fine. Okay. Right. Good. Thank you. Senator Russell Long, please. All right, sir. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you. Hello? Hello, Mr. President. I hear you did a hell of a job up there, yeah? We got your dead limit bill on scramble. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, God, you just saved the government about $200 million. Well, I don't know if we accomplished anything, but anyway, we got... You know, I thought old William was trying to help you. <laughs> you hope for that damn amendment to screw this thing up. I know, but I mean, you know, by the time they get through... Secretary of Treasury is going to come back and tell him what he what he thought, but uh, I, I thought I knew what he wanted in the beginning, but he's going to come back and tell him he's on his way down the hall to talk to those Republicans to see if I get some help. I thought old William had decided to help the man. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he did. Uh, yeah. I know, but listen, you, I hear you did a hell of a job up there, Russell. That's terrific. Well, thanks so much, Mr. President. How are you doing? I hear we're in some trouble in Louisiana. Well, sir, I haven't had a chance to check today. I was down in, I went to Houston, Texas to kind of see if I could squeeze a little money out of all people to get us long, and and the, I talked to the governor of Louisiana from over there, and he said that he thought he could, might be able to keep that bill in that uh, house. The thing is, what's so screwy about that thing is that if a Democrat carries Louisiana, no matter who those delegates are, they can't go up and make a deal with a Republican then. Let's say the, because the Republican can't look like he's in the position of outbidding a Democrat on some civil right question. So therefore, the best they could do is throw it in the House of Representatives, and then it puts, then everybody gets a sort of on the hot seat, 
because then either you break up the Democratic Party or everybody votes Democratic. So where does it end? I know it's sort of just a means of protest, isn't it? Well, no, what they've got in mind, uh, uh, they're trying to work out a sort of a block vote type deal where they would get their votes together and, yeah. then, and then say, all right, now, if a guy's got, if our vote might elect somebody president, yeah. then he's going have to have to uh, have to come to our terms. Now, you know, those fellows made some kind of a deal like that in that Tilden Hayes race, uh, as I, I believe it was. Yeah, that's right, I know. And, uh, but this isn't uh, 1870. Oh, I agree. I think uh, it's it well, it 1876. I think it's a lousy idea. Because what happens is, I mean, it will become the most publicized thing. Then they come up and say, well, you've got to do something. You know, you got first place, you've got the courts operating anyway, no matter what the president did. Right. And then they come up, and then everybody's looking and saying, well, what is the president promising this group? And pretty soon you've got the goddamn this mayhem, and it finally ends up in the House of Representatives. It doesn't get them much. In addition, everybody then says, Christ, the South is so uncertain that I better just try to get my votes in the North. That's right. Well, of course, the worst thing about that, uh, if you, I don't know who you thought about it, but, but the bill that they've got, I haven't studied it, but I've, I've been told about it. You see, the worst thing about that is that, in effect, that would take the South out of the That's presidential right. exactly, election. Exactly, exactly. So that uh, if, if, Until we, afterwards. If, if we were not going to vote on whether you were going to be president or not, why should you promise yeah, us anything? Exactly. You, you should direct your appeal to those well, you're, that's that's one. where the Negro vote might be the key vote. And at least I could count on it. Otherwise, I'd have to figure, well, I have to do my business after November, and I can't do it under those conditions. I think it's crazy for the South, because this way I'm concerned about Georgia and Louisiana and these places where we got a chance to carry. Right. But if I end up with no chance to carry them, then I got to go up north and try to do my business. Right. Well, now I tell you, I did some talking with Gittes Long, and both of us agreed that that we ought that we ought to be against this thing. Sure. Now, now here's a but here's a conclusion that we held by it also. Whether we win or lose on this fight, uh, this bunch of wild citizens council and Q Club down there can renew this battle after the next pres after the next gubernatorial race, and so can we. In other words, if we win the governor's race. But of course, it's harder to repeal it. It's harder to repeal. This way, the governor's always sitting there. Yeah. It's much harder to repeal it once it's. Uh, but uh, well, but anyway, you you say you could. They'll renew well, it I, after. I think we've got a chance. Uh, I haven't. Uh, have you heard what happened down there in the House of Representatives today? I haven't heard. No. no. Well, I've been on the floor here, but uh, uh, I will undertake to find out what happened down there. And and uh, uh, what this thing is very similar to the stand I made in that 1952 convention when my delegation yeah. wanted to walk out. What I said was that I'm not going to even, I'm, I'm not going to I remember, I was there. I'm not going to promise I'm going to vote for the man you nominate, yeah. but, I, but I'll stake my political existence on the right of my people to vote for him if that's what they want to do, that's you right. see? That's right. And, uh, uh, that's the best line, isn't it? That's right. And, and, and frankly, what I, now Gillis and I have talked about it, and frankly, I thought since he's running for governor, it'd be they're just, just confidence. Please don't, don't go tell Dallas that. <laughs> I just, yeah. you know, Dallas, no, Dallas that ran out on me at Chicago at that time. Yeah. I just knew he didn't know what we were thinking about this. But but I figured it was, well, hell, why not go ahead and stand up on the issue uh, and take this attitude with them that uh, that you boys are trying to call off the president's race. And let me tell you something in this way, democracy. If you want to call off that president's race, you better try to call your race off because you're going to be the guy that your time you try to tell the people that they can't vote. You yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. is, which I think is essentially what that thing would be. Uh, I'll find out how it's going down there. Uh, I'm, as I say, the governor thought he could tie it up in that appropriations committee and kill it there. It seems to me that there are ways under the rules of the legislature where they could maneuver to offer it on the floor even if the committee wouldn't report it out. Yeah. But I'll try to check it and find out just where we stand. At the moment, old Jimmy Davis is trying to help us with that thing. I don't know who called him, but somebody did. And, and he uh, said, Larry O'Brien called him this morning. Right. And, uh, well, look, well, Larry might know the latest on it. Okay, I'll get a hold of Larry. Right, so, well, that was good today. And anything you can do on this thing, because God, Louisiana would like to get a chance at it anyway. Well, I'm not too, thank you, Mr. President, I'm not too much worried about, about how this thing works out in Louisiana for now. Because as far as Louisiana's concerned, I think that we could, uh, that, yeah, uh, I think our chance of winning the, the governor's election is good. And if we win the governor's election, it's yeah. completely in our part to make it how we bless it well please. But the thing is that we have an effect on Florida. Well, it? The, 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 it, I am a little concerned about it sort of starting a, a, a starting a movement, you know. That's right, because Florida is hanging on the edge anyway. Yeah, right. Well, uh, I'll try to help, and and uh, uh, and both now and if the damn fool thing carries, I'll try to help to get it repealed later on. But the, but for right now, I think it'd be good for us to see if we can't beat it. I think that the, somebody must stand up on the issue. Though, as far as I'm concerned, I'm against it, not afraid to say so. Okay, good. Fine, Russell. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
but all I know, he had never talked to me. Dylan told me that he thought it was important that we make an announcement. I know, but I mean, my God, I only got your report last weekend. Did, did Tripp ever know that we were about to go ahead on this thing? Uh, I don't know. I assume that Dylan... Were there any conversations with Tripp on this? Not, not with me. He never talked to me, and he talked to Dylan. Dylan had a conversation with him. Well, I think it's very. I think it's very peculiar that he would announce that today at a time when he knew that the government was about to go ahead. Uh, Hallaby, Hallaby urged him not to. Told me that he had had uh, two or three conversations with him. He had some kind yeah, but I mean, my God, we've been uh, this. Your group has looked at it for a couple of months. We get this thing last weekend. I don't understand why Trip feels he has to go ahead just when we're about to do something about it. It makes it. I think we have to take it along now. It's rather stupid of us to be putting it out tomorrow if he's already buying a European plane. It will make it look as if we don't know as if, uh, what the hell our market is. Fine. Okay, well, I'll see you at five then. Is he, so. on, the, is he on the wire with it? No, he's put it out. Yeah, he's, he's buying. Pan American World announces has ordered six new Concorde supersonic jet transport, which can fly to the United States in two and a half hours. He made the announcement. Be equipped with it. We've jointly. Now, that's very peculiar. Uh, for him to do that at a time when he knew we were about to do it. Well, that doesn't mean he has to do it. Didn't he know we were about to put it out here? Yes, he did. Well, this is, is this deliberate? I can't tell. Well, you can tell him he's given me the best argument for not having one airline represent the United States that I've ever heard. And I'm going to spend the next time I'm here really giving a screwing to Pan American because that, gives, that sticks it right to us. How can we possibly go ahead now with our program, to which we're going to spend an awful lot of money, which was very important to the United States, which affected the balance of payments in hundreds of millions of dollars, and I'm going to put all this out, and then go ahead about 24 hours before we're about to make our announcement. Yes. Didn't, that, didn't you have an understanding with him yes. that he would wait? Yes. Well, now, will you give him this message from me and make it very clear that I think he ought to retract that, and he ought to wait now and see what the United States is going to do, or otherwise it's going to be very clear that Pan Am is contributing in a significant way to the United States being in a secondary position in the air and also to our balance of payment problem. And I'll, we'll give him all the trouble he wants because there isn't going to be anything that's going to make me more excited than doing that. All right. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Yes, Mr. Uh, did you see what uh, Juan Tripp did? No, I did not. He put out an announcement this afternoon that he's going to buy six planes from the British and the French. How could he do that when he knew we were about to go ahead? Oh. Uh, I don't know. He, he said that apparently to Hallaby, I haven't talked to him recently, that he was under pressure from the British and French governments to... Well, what kind of pressure? Because the goddamn plane isn't going to be ready in six years, and here the United States government's about to go into a major program. And where does that leave us? I mean, didn't we have any understanding with him that he wouldn't go ahead while we were trying to come up with our proposal? I don't think there was any... Uh, did anybody tell him that didn't... Uh, I think Hallaby did tell him. Hallaby... Did you have any talks with him? Day. I only had that one that I sent a memorandum to. It was over about a week ago, and I haven't talked with him since then. Uh, well, I think you ought to call him up, Doug, and say that we're goddamn sore about this. He knew the United States. My God, I had it in my speech for tomorrow. Yeah. We're about to announce a program. I mean, everybody worked this weekend. I only got the vice president's report on Friday or Saturday. Right. And we, I talked to McNamara on Sunday. They worked yesterday. We're putting it in a speech for tomorrow. And for him to go ahead on Tuesday afternoon, which involves hundreds of millions of dollars of balance of payments, which is going to sabotage a program to put the United States up in the lead in the 70s, it's very difficult for us to go ahead if he's buying. I think he ought to retract that thing until oh. he sees what sort of an offer we've got. Oh, he isn't going to buy these planes. Well, now, wait a minute. You see, here's the AP story. Yeah. Pan American World Airways announced today it has ordered six new Concorde supersonic jet transports. Right. Well, I mean, Christ, he's buying them. No, he isn't going to buy them. I saw the contract, and... Uh, well, I think he ought to put out a statement that he's not buying them. He has them. an option to buy them. Well, except, you uh, see, that isn't the way the announcement well, reads. I see the announcement reads differently, but I read the contract, which you showed to me a week ago, and he has... Well, he be, why don't they... Put, you he better has the right to pull out for a million and a half dollars. Uh, well, they better put out a statement, because otherwise, for me to go now ahead and announce our program is going to look awfully foolish. He ought to make a, an announcement that, you know, that they've made no decision on buying the plane. They merely purchased an option. Why they felt they had to purchase an option, I don't know, at this point. I mean, Christ, if we're going to go ahead, the French and the British aren't in such a strong position. I mean, he, did, he, he threw a million and a half bucks down the drain, because... I think he has. Because yeah. when we do our our thing, uh, then well, what the hell does he need an option? They're going to be around, everybody's going to be around competing to sell them. That's right. Now, but the only thing is, he's made it very difficult for us now to go ahead and announce our program. If it looks like, uh, uh, and, and the fact is, he knew this was coming up. Hallaby told him two or three times. He's given me the best argument for not having one airline and making it Pan Am that I've ever heard. 
Yeah, I don't know why he did it. He's so indifferent to what the United States government is doing. I think, Doug, you ought to call him up and stick it right up his I, ass. I, I, I want him to eat that today because otherwise we can't possibly go ahead. Why don't I will call Hallaby and find Well, him. I got Hallaby. Hallaby's in his office. Yeah. But I think you ought to just say that we think that this is a deliberate thing to beat us when we're about to announce a program, and it ensures a hundreds of millions of balance of payment loss, and it ensures that there's no sense of the United States government going ahead with a program that would give us the lead in the 70s, and that this uh, looks to the president as a deliberate act, and I'm really going to, we're going to spend our time screwing Pan Am. So why don't you give him some of that, see well, if you can get him to pull that, that back. He made very clear that he is, uh, this is not a balance of payments loss when he talked to me, but I'll see if I can get him to make that clear publicly. Well, he can, how can, why, how, why isn't it a balance of payments well, loss? Well, he says he's not going to buy the plane. Well, what does he announce? You better get that announcement. Wait a minute, which number is it? UPI. It's UPI 122. Now, maybe they better get out another announcement then, clarify it for the end of the day, or otherwise I don't see where we're going to be. Yeah, because uh, okay. I, I think you saw Can you get the memo, right? Yeah, but I'd make it pretty unpleasant with him, All or right, make, make it look like everybody over here thinks he gave us a deliberate screwing. Yeah. Okay. Spend five thousand dollars for that. Let's cut their budget another hundred million. Precisely, Mr. President. Uh, the last word that they had for me yesterday after my talk to Pierre was to keep the photographers yeah. out of there and, okay. and fight them out of there. Okay. They went ahead on their own. The funny part about this is that it's a sidelight, which might lighten your day. Is that the army, you know, whom we save from this sort of thing out Walter Reed? When they saw this yesterday, they're unhappy. If you please. <laughs> Well, they, I mean, yeah, so that's why the goddamn service, they ought to cut them a billion dollars. That's right, exactly. I mean, when you think of what the waste goes on. It I mean, is, absolute nonsense. Imagine nice. what they do if you didn't just stay in their ass. They're going to order me three planes instead of one. Precisely. They're going to do all these, I mean, they, that's the way they, these guys spend money. I mean, oh, absolutely. They shock that we don't. Now, the only thing is, it would seem to me, I'd like to turn that, I'd like to send that furniture back. Have they paid for it? I, I'll find out, Mr. Just on my own. I don't care. We own a store, but I just like to send that goddamn furniture back. It's probably worth about two, fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks. When I asked him yesterday, where did the five thousand dollars go yeah. from the things they told me? I said, well, you couldn't have possibly spent five thousand on that. They've lied about it. Now I've gone back to them this morning and said, get the facts. And I'm sick of let's being yeah. telling the president of the White House the wrong facts. Said, let's get the facts to begin with. Let's find out how much they spent on this thing. Uh, I mean, let's find out what they spent, where the money came from. Well, also, run down where if the bills have been paid, because a lot of the stuff we can just ship right back today. Right. I'll get right I'd love to send it right back to Jordan Marsh in an Air Force truck this afternoon with that captain on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about transferring his ass out of here in about a month? He uh, doesn't have any sense. I had the Carlson. For incompetence, it. not for screwing us. Exactly. Well, and I'm that silly fellow who had his picture taken next to the bed, I'd have him go up to Alaska, too. The PA will be talking to you about that. Right. Okay. General? Yes, sir. That Air Force has caused itself more grief with that silly bastard. Did you see the post this morning? Yes, sir. I'm looking See that it. fellow's picture by the bed? Yes, sir. Are they, and you see that uh, furniture they bought from Jordan Marsh? What the hell did they let the reporters in there for? Are they crazy up there? Now you know what's going to do. Any congressman's going to get up and say, Christ, if they can throw $5,000 away on this, let's cut them another billion dollars. You just sank the Air Force budget. You're crazy up there. Are they crazy? That silly bastard with his picture next to the bed? Sir, I'm uh, appalled, but... Uh... Well, I'm appalled, too. Well, now, the I thing is, I, the I thing of the matter is, I'm going to get that furniture. I just told Sylvester, and you can talk to him. I want to find out if we pay for that furniture, because I want it to go back to Jordan Marsh. All right, sir. Then I want that fellow's incompetent who had his picture taken next to Mrs. Kennedy's bed, if that's what it is. I mean, he's a silly bastard. I wouldn't have him running a cat house. And that uh, Colonel Carlson, who let in Larry Newman and those reporters, is he crazy, too? Christ, they're not all incompetent. Is that the way they're throwing money around over there? You better look into it, and especially when you told me that they hadn't spent a cent. Well, sir, this is uh, obviously... Uh, well, this is obviously a puck out. That's right. Okay. That's right. Right. right.
Mike, I've just been talking to Larry on this matter of Stennis. Uh, the reason I made such a thing about it is because, uh, in my opinion, the Chiefs are the key, and what they will say in public would be more pro-treaty than what they will say under interrogation by Scoop Jackson with leading questions and Barry Goldwater and Strom, and uh, where it's a much hotter atmosphere and where these fellows can be taken along a road, yeah. which can be much more mischievous. When they went, but if they go on record first in front of the Foreign Relations Committee, then it's more difficult for them to, uh, even though they will still do the same thing with Stennis, the public record is there first, and they don't have to worry about what they said in private the day before. Now, I understand that there was an agreement made that John Stennis, uh, uh, by Max Taylor, that he'd come Wednesday the 14th, but no agreement was ever made, I'm sure, because nobody could possibly make it, that he would hear the Chiefs first before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Oh, that's, that's, that's now, as I, he, I understand he's around saying there was such an agreement? Uh, yes, that was his understanding. And who with? Who was the agreement with? Well, when I talked to him, I just mentioned Maxwell Taylor, and I suppose he assumed the chief of staff, the chief of staff at the same time. No, but I understand that he, but the, uh, Max Taylor said he would be there the 14th, that's but he didn't say he would be there before he was at the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. What right, really, has a subcommittee of the Armed Services Committee to hear on a bill, which uh, on a major piece of legislation, uh, the uh, chiefs of staff, uh, uh, before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. No, 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 no right at all, except that they've been trying to get uh, Taylor and the Chiefs for some time, and... Uh, well, you see, they had two Chiefs, but they were having them on the comprehensive. That's Actually, right. they haven't got a jury. This is a matter, really, which is a Foreign Relations Committee matter, and which they also have a right, it seems to me, to explore, but for them to say that they should have the Chiefs in private, which will be leaked in the most distorted way to Scripps Hobb, because all that's already happened. See, they, two weeks ago at the time that Averill was signing it, stories came out about the statements of the chiefs, but of course they were talking about the comprehensive. What I'm concerned about is that these chiefs will write in private a record which they will then feel obliged to sustain in, uh, in uh, public. Well, if we could get them on the public record uh, and publicize that to the nation, then whatever was leaked out of the, of the uh, committee uh, would have much less impact. That's true, but I think that you get the backs of these people up. I think uh, Stennis may come with us on the treaty, but I think he's being pushed by, by his committee. Uh, but I accept he hasn't any right to... I, I think you can just say that, of course, you can have Max Taylor, but you've got... He has no right to say that we promised him, because nobody did, that he would have them before the... I mean, that, that's no... Uh, he hasn't any jurisdiction in the matter. What we're going to do is appease him in the hope that we might get him, and, and which we may or may not get him, and, we're, and we take great dangers, it seems to me, in getting the Chiefs of Staff on in a sour way. That's what I'm concerned about. That's true, but then what, what, what happens if, if there's a follow-up on this is he, he gets to the rest of the Armed Services Committee and uh, he, he, he weakens the, uh, the, the strength we, we must have to, to pass the treaty. Well, I think that what we ought to... What is your judgment about our saying to Stennis he can have Max Taylor the 14th? But uh, the, the well, Max my judgment is that he'll come back and say, Mr. President, it was my understanding that I would have Max Taylor and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Yeah, all right. Let's say he says he has Max Taylor and the Joint Chiefs of Staff on Wednesday the 14th. But that nobody ever said that it would be first and that we will therefore get a statement of the Joint Chiefs, which will be submitted for the public record on Wednesday, perhaps Wednesday morning, to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Then that will be the public record. Then they're not going to be able to leak it on us. Do you have any objection to that? Well, uh, that's, uh, I can see your point, but then they, they'll pull out this uh, this leak that Larry told you about, I hope. Yeah, but I told, that cable was oh. sent by uh, with my full knowledge, because I, the, for the reasons that I'm now saying, I thought it was very important that they go before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, before they go to the Preparedness Committee, and I would use as my justification for that this very, uh, this leak out of the Preparedness Committee uh, that uh, two weekends ago, and therefore we're on very solid ground for saying that it should go in, prepare, in, in the presentation of a case, we should have the right, it seems to me, to present our case. Then they should have, have the right anybody wants to rebuttal or examination. So it's quite obvious that what's going to happen is that uh, they're attempting to cut across the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in an area where they have jurisdiction second to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee with, our, with the key witnesses in executive session, subject to leaking and subject to interrogation by Gowar and others in private. Then when they get on the public record, they're going to be inhibited, it seems to me, by the private record they've made. Well, if they make the public record first, then the, what they say in private can't be leaked because they've already said they were far. Now, uh, I don't care about this cable. That cable was sent with my full knowledge. I don't know what it said, but I told them to get a hold of Fulbright and find out whether Fulbright wouldn't arrange his things so these people would come first. That's true. That's true. But Is that what the cable says? 
Well, yes, uh, to uh, that uh, to get them to uh, to appear before the Foreign Relations Committee. That's correct. And uh, I have discussed this with John Sparkman, who's been doing yeoman work with Stennis, yeah. and uh, he, in effect, agreed with uh, what I suggested in the memorandum I gave to Larry. I also want you to know, though, that anything you want to do, you go ahead and do it, and it'll have my full support. Yeah, I understand I'm that. The boats. I understand. I, the only thing is. John Stennis, uh, who's a good fellow and everything, he's making up a story, or somebody is, when he said there was an agreement they would come first to him. What there was evidently was Max Taylor's agreement that he would come the 14th. Now, I would like to get these chiefs, because I regard the chiefs as key to this thing. Yes. If we don't get the chiefs just right, we can blow, get blown. Yes. I would like to get them on a public record uh, before uh, they go to the preparedness committee. Now, uh, I will call you back, but I just wanted to... Uh, and find out whether we can get some. I've been there working on a policy statement, which we might have available for submission to the committee for Wednesday morning, and therefore released to the press. And they would then, the chiefs would then come before the Foreign Relations Committee to explain it a little later. But at least we would have the news story out in any good fashion we can, rather than some leak out of that committee. Yes, but then would would that mean then that the chiefs would go before or Stennis' committee first? Under this, under if we can get a good policy thing and release it to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for release. And that would include uh, Taylor? That would include Taylor. Under that, uh, under that, that would be uh, our way, it seems to me, the only way we could protect ourselves. Well, uh, okay. Let me call you back before we uh, come to any conclusion on it. But I think you uh, sh should realize in talking to Stennis or anybody that he, that he had no agreement with anybody. Well, on I... the except that Max Taylor would be there the 14th. And I have no objection to his having the chiefs. But I do object to his saying that uh, he had an understanding that they would come there before they went to the Foreign Relations Committee, because that he never had that understanding. Well, no, but he sort of uh, feels, I suppose, due to committee pressure that the ground is being cut out from under him, and he's been most patient, been most considerate. Uh, but this is something that's, that, that he feels because of pressure from within. Yeah, well, this is bigger than than Stennis. And it looked like part of a setup. Yeah, well, that was a part of it. I haven't seen the way it was worded, but I was, uh, for the reasons that I've given you, you see, the chiefs have always been our problem. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because, you know, and especially they get into that kind of a committee setup, and, they just, and then you get Barry Gore to ask a lot of questions. They got Teller up there today. I mean, it shows what their proceedings are going to be like. I told Stennis, I said, the reason that we want to delay this is because so that the committee can have a, the Foreign Relations Committee, if this treaty is signed, will have a chance to consider the limited test ban, whereas your committee covers the comprehensive test, but you know as well as I do that uh, this is going to be the main subject, not the comprehensive test. Well, he said, I know that. He said, I'm willing to wait and let it go. But he's got pressure from his own people in the meantime. They've used this, this table brand uh, to uh, indicate that uh, some attempt is being done to cut them. Uh, Jackson is not being very good in his speeches, I must say. It and, certainly uh, isn't. Uh, but that's all right. We but, just have to fight it out. Well, However, come along. But I, let me just check back with you, Mike, after I find out what the Chiefs could do in the way of a policy paper today. Well, now, uh, uh, pardon me for asking, but how soon will you be calling back? I just wonder, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go home, and it's going to be a little while. Uh, yeah, I'll call you back at home. Okay, Mr. President, Thanks. think it over carefully. Okay. Because we want the votes on that committee if we can get them. Yeah, what I'll, all I'd like to do is, based, is get the Chiefs on a public record before it can be leaked out to, which I'm afraid it would be Wednesday afternoon, that the Chiefs have grave reservations about this treaty which is what I'm afraid would come out of the Stennis Committee. Now, is, uh, I understand also that Taylor is supposed to work with McNamara tomorrow. Well, that's what I'm going to check on. Care about that. Yeah, well, that, you see, the, this we may not do. We may attempt to do both things, to give Stennis what he wants of having the Chiefs come first there, but have the Chiefs public statement for release Wednesday. If we've got that, then I would have no objection to their going to this private committee. No, that'd be all right. But uh, that's what I'm going to try to find out if they can get us a paper today that could be released Wednesday morning to Fulbright. But the one thing we, we want to re want to get are the votes, and yeah. as I indicated in that memorandum. But you see, what, what I'm afraid of is that, that see, any one of those senators can leak what they want right. out of the preparedness committee. That's right. So then we'll and be... They will. And they will. Yeah. So we would need, if we didn't have a paper for release on Wednesday, we would need the chiefs before the Foreign Relations Committee on Thursday. Now, he hasn't any right to have them more than one day. Well, he could finish them, yeah. but uh, if, uh, if you're going to work it that way, uh, keep Taylor away from the Foreign Relations Committee tomorrow, too. Yeah, okay. Go all the way with Stennis. All right, I'll call you later. Mark. Okay, and I've talked to Sparkman about this, and any additional information, uh, he might be going to call, too. To, he's very good. Okay, fine. fine. Thank you. Thank you. The President congratulating former President Truman on his 77th birthday by telephone to Kansas City, Missouri. From the recording studios in the White House, Washington, D.C., 
May the 8th, 1961. Hello. Hey, Mr. President, how are you? Well, I'm all right. Having a great time, and they're giving me too much to eat and too much to do. Well, listen, I want to congratulate you and uh, on this uh, great anniversary. Well, you're very kind indeed. Well, I must you say know, that... I've always hoped that after I was 70, they'd forget about these birthdays, <laughs> but they don't seem to do it. I don't understand how you can look so well after having spent seven years here. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how I how, how I did that. I did just what you were doing. Yeah, Try well. to make the right decision and forget about it. And that's what you have to do. And then sleep over it at night and forget about it. Well, listen. We really. I'm delighted. Uh, I had uh, lunch with the vice president and uh, some of your uh, friends who were governors, Governor Lawrence and the rest. And they all wanted me to join in congratulating you. We're all uh, well, great rooters of yours, Mr. President. Just as kind as you can be, and I more than appreciate it. Well, you take care. Well, you take care of yourself, and we look forward to seeing you soon here yeah. in Washington. I'll be there. We're taking good care of your house. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>